Welcome to what figures to be a very bittersweet episode of the People Sports Podcast. I am Mark Titus. She is Charlotte Wilder. We are in, uh, we are having a conflict of mood, Charlotte, because on today's show, I'm going to spoil it. Uh, and by spoil it, I mean, I'm going to reiterate what you saw on the podcast title when you click play on this thing, because you know what's coming. Uh, we are going to talk about the Olympics. We are excited to talk about the Olympics, because uh, who isn't excited to talk about the Olympics? The Olympics are great. Before we do, Charlotte, mm-hmm. what we don't want to talk about mm. is very sad news in our world. Ah, The dream is open- dead. <sighs> okay. Love does not exist. Nope. The, at, least, at least the love between two human beings apparently does not exist the love between a man and his uh his his teammates his locker room his uh <laughs> his desire to be the quarterback of the green bay packers that's still that that love will be eternal it, it it appears because aaron Rodgers is not in fact retiring or is he that's the question so, I, everyone's asking, Charlotte. Is he? Are, are we is sure? He? No. <laughs> See, the thing is, Mark, that we are now the only ones asking that question. And we died on this hill that Aaron Rodgers was retiring. And when you opened this saying it was going to be bittersweet, I was like, oh, no, what happened? Then I was like, oh, what happened was that we were wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the problem. Um, but I think I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that we weren't entirely wrong because someone asked him in his press conference if he thought about retiring, and he said that he did think about yes. retiring. Yes. So I think we were actually correct that at one point Aaron Rodgers, in his mind at least, was retired. Oh, my God. You get it. You finally get it, Shelly. Can we play back the footage of when I was telling you I was actually right about Brad Stevens and you were like falling <laughs> out of your chair, rolling your eyes so hard? And now you're basically parodying word for word what I said. Oh, <laughs> God. This is so depressing. I'm embarrassed But that's okay because you've joined my side. You get it. You get how it works. Don't you think? Like, we – I mean, it's what you said. The material changed. The material changed. He said he was retired. Uh, yeah. Something changed. I, I don't know what because I didn't watch the press conference. I'm not watching any press conference. Like I said, I – uh, like, like I said on Monday, Why? I am because I'm blocking out the noise. I, and that includes the noise coming out of Aaron Rodgers' mouth. You can't block. So you're just you, you want zero information so that in your at, brain you can be right. At what point does the noise become reality? That's my question. Where I'm like blocking out reality. I think I'm, I'm there. I'm you're just there, blocking dude. out reality. The I'm noise just like, is fact, man. <laughs> and you're just not opening your brain to new well, information. Until he... Until he, uh, uh, what? until he, until he was the week one starter, I'm, <laughs> I'm still choosing to believe that something, because he's changed his mind already, Charlotte. Why can't he change it back? Why okay. can't he change it back? Yes. Why can't he get, how do we know that he's not going to go to training camp? He's going to start, uh, you know, r- running, uh, God knows what, scout team with mm-hmm. this, the, doing God, whatever they do in football practice. Who knows know. these days? I, I don't they don't know, hit each honestly. other. We know that. There's no more hitting in football, so I don't know what they're practicing out there. So football's um, dead. <laughs> football's dead. Uh, what if he starts practicing? Uh, some of the some of the younger guys are are pulling some zany hijinks in the locker room, as you mm-hmm. do in the locker room. Mm-hmm. You know, they're putting they're putting stuff in his shoes, and they're like, "Aaron, gotcha, classic zinger, gotcha." <laughs> and he looks are around, you talking about? and Charlotte, he looks around, and he's like, "I'm too old for this." I actually do want to retire. I forgot. I hate this. This sucks. <gasps> oh, okay. So when he so finds he shaving cream mind. in his locker, that'll yes. be the tip. Okay. T- I have two prove thoughts. To me One, that that can- prove to me that, that uh, there's zero chance that that could happen. That's all I'm saying. I can't. I can't. Yeah, exactly. I can't prove that. <laughs> this is, it's very, I think, okay, two thoughts from what you just said. One, it would be unbelievably funny if the rookies, after all of this drama, were like, yo, dude, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to prank the shit out of Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. <laughs> They're like, you know, we had to deal with all of this drama in the off season, and yeah. now I'm just going to prank him. Two, wouldn't it be hilarious if they made Jordan love the starter after that all would of be this? Fu- yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would laugh. But, and even if you're okay. telling me there's a 1% chance that could happen, um, uh, that's all I need. We will that's cling all. to any <laughs> thread of hope that will make us somewhat correct here. Um, I, there are a few things from the press conference I need to fill you in on, which is that Roger said, yes, he considered retiring. He said that um, he learned a lot about himself and bettering himself and spending mm-hmm. time away from the game with, you know, loved ones or whatever. And I was like, just say Shailene, like give mm-hmm. us at least give us that. But he said that he still has a competitive hole in his body that he needs to fill. And I want to know, what does that 
mean? Does that is it in the shape of a Lombardi trophy? Hmm. Does he just want to be out there? Because here's the problem, Mark. Aaron Rodgers has gone on his the, people are calling this the last dance, which it isn't, because as far as we know, he's not retiring maybe after this no, season. No, I heard I, I heard he was. I heard this is his last season. He's retired. If he does in fact come back, this will be his now last season. Now I can't season. tell if you're if you don't know. You haven't That's heard what my anything. sources. I talked to uh Colin Carl Kaepernick. Anthony Towns. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Kaepernick, who's who's been working out with Aaron Rodgers. I talked to him and uh, he told me expect Aaron Rodgers to be done after this year. So uh, I, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's breaking news of or you whatever. Getting but... an interview with Colin Kaepernick and the only thing you ask him about is Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, Oh, never mind. I'll save that for later. I, okay. I, I, go ahead. Okay, so so the other thing is that he said that he felt like the management had not treated veteran players well. And so part of the deal mm. is that he wants his buddy Randall Cobb back. So Randall's apparently coming back. He's out there. My question to you is like, what is it? What is what's, Oh, he also, he threw the media under the bus again. Obviously he was like, I haven't said anything. I didn't leak anything. You guys yeah. ran with this whole story. And I'm like, well, yeah, obviously it's our it's job. Disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> though people do that. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it is. It's like, it's, <laughs> The guy's just living his life, and then just people get just because I don't know what because they 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 have a microphone that that, <laughs> that entitles them to just speculate. It's 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 reckless, Charlotte. It's disgusting. You know it's, it it is. It's a blight on our society. Who would do that for money? It's disgusting. <laughs> Makes me sick. Anyway, uh, so my question to you though is why is he doing? What what's his end game at this point? Um. I don't think he has an end game. I think Aaron Rodgers is just doing whatever feels good to him in the moment. That's what I think. I, think <laughs> I really do genuinely think that he uh, he didn't retire. I don't think uh, he he retired and then unretired. I think he went into the off season and was like, "I'll feel it out. I'll see what happens. I don't care. I'm, I'm prepared to walk away." It's one of those deals where when you're in negotiation uh, and and they say if you're if if you're gonna you have to be prepared to walk away to actually be prepared to walk away. Yes. A lot of people will bluff. They'll say I don't need this job, so I'm gonna throw out a, a a stupid amount of a salary, and maybe they'll match it. And then when that company doesn't match the salary, they panic and they're like, ah, I actually do need the job, whatever. And I think Aaron Rodgers this summer was at a point where he was like, honestly, I'm just gonna like go with the flow and see what happens. And he's like, I don't think I need this. I would like to have it. Maybe I wouldn't. That's my read on it, Charlotte. So uh, I don't know what, I don't think he has an end game. I don't, th he could play for five. Like he, he, I could see him patching it up with green Bay and he's there for five more years. And it is what it is. I could see him. I, I could see him getting pranked in training camp and retiring. <laughs> I'd be like, to hell with this. I could see him like, like Shailene, is she, is she going to Wisconsin with them? I assume so if they're engaged, but I could well, see Shailene being like, Wisconsin sucks. Can we go back to Maui and, Where's she from? Boulder or or yeah. California or God knows what? Um, she seems like she's from Boulder slash LA at well, the same she's, time. She's I from think both. she is. I think she's from Denver actually. But yeah, that's that's. It I makes might have a lot made that sense. up. Don't take my um, word for that. Um, so uh, that's that's my read on it. Is that he's just he's just playing it by ear, and uh, I I don't know that, that that's what makes it impossible. What makes it so fun for us though, is we can speculate because like. You know who the hell he, he 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 i don't think he knows so how can we know if he doesn't know yes exactly That's i love what makes that it fun i love i love i think that that is exactly right i think the reason that you and i particularly have loved the aaron Rodgers <laughs> drama if i may be so bold as to speak for the both of us is that i think you and i have reached a stage of our lives where we, we talked about this when he was in hawaii just living his life we were like yeah man I could see that, you know, like yeah. not really because I love my career. And as I'm saying that, I'm getting nervous hearing myself say that. But like you reach a sort of acceptance with certain things where you're like, oh, like, you know, I this nothing is the end of the world. Yes. And then you can because he that is operating from the most pure position of strength to feel like you really don't have anything to lose because right. you're like, OK, cool, like do whatever you want. I'm going to be fine either way. And then they cave and give him Randall Cobb and they're like, okay, okay, come back. And he's like, all right, for a year, we'll see. And they're like, okay, yeah. cool. He had all the leverage because he legitimately didn't care. That's exactly what I think happened is that I think he doesn't care, but I like, he also loved football. So like coming yeah. back, isn't the end of the world. It's not like he's coming back. He's like, damn it. I can't believe they gave me what I want. So now I have to come back. Like, I think he's like, cool. I love football. I'll play football. I'll not play football. I don't know. I'm a wild card baby. And then he just 
Who knows what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers? That's what makes it fun, Charlotte. Yeah, that's what I makes agree. it fun. Um, I'm not counting out retirement at any point in time. I think like that's the other move we could do is we mm-hmm. could just like keep saying he's going <laughs> to retire. Like do what ba- basically people have done with Tom Brady for like the last six years. Yeah. It's just <laughs> like eventually always, be right when yes, he's like retirement 90 years old. Is it Im- imminent? It is going to happen. And then when it happens, we're like, told you. And yeah. it happens in 2038. <laughs> and we're like, see? <laughs> Okay, well, we need to start pre-recording those. Be like, yeah. you know, it could happen, right? You you got today's already in the bag, but I'll toss one in next what, week if we have to. What is a funnier outcome to you? Uh, not, I don't mean what's better for our content for our show. I mean okay. just in your private life. Yeah. Um, not not for the show. Uh, when you're sitting on your couch, what makes you just cackle with laughter mm-hmm. more? Would it be the Packers sucking and like missing the playoffs now, mm-hmm. or winning the Super Bowl? Which is the funnier outcome to you? To me, the funnier outcome is definitely winning the Super Bowl because I think it's sort of too, it's sort of it's too easy to assume that they won't because, like, honestly, I don't think they will. Like, I, yeah. I feel like Rodgers, in terms of perception among fans and the media, unless he wins a Super Bowl, he's sort of screwed. They're like, oh, this guy did like and he doesn't care. And like, I don't really care, but some people care. And so I think that it would be very funny if everyone who's been like, oh, he's being a diva or like he doesn't actually yeah. care about Green Bay had to sort of eat their words when he's like, oh, here's a goddamn Super Bowl trophy, you morons. And they have to be like, OK, thanks, Aaron. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And then he retires. Yeah. He wins <laughs> he the Super retires. Bowl and then he retires or then he like demands a trade to like, I don't know, the Vikings like Brett Favre. I know Brett Favre went to the Jets before the Vikings are, but he just like, he, he wins Green Bay a Super Bowl, but then somehow stabs Green Bay in the back like hardcore where like, they he puts Green Bay fans and the organization yes. in, in a situation where they can't be mad at him because he <laughs> delivered another Super Bowl, but also... <laughs> Like the way, but what then you're he just like cracks and, their hearts yes, into millions yes. of pieces. <laughs> yes, I love did, that. Yeah, that that, I, that would yeah. be pretty fun. I think I'm with you. I think them winning this. I think the Packers winning the Super Bowl is the best case scenario here. Yeah, I um, want that to happen. Like I'm rooting yeah. for. I'm on. And here's the thing, you know, when Aaron was like, "Oh, the media just spun this all out," I wanted to raise my hand and be like, "Aaron, <laughs> listen, yes, we did." However, we have been on your side this whole time. Yeah. Like, we are team Aaron Rodgers. I'm probably going to be, you know, like, I might go so far as to say I will put on a Green Bay Packers fandom hat this season because I'm that invested in the outcome up there because I love drama. And yeah. I'm a messy person. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on this, Charlotte, in general. Not with, mm-hmm. not just Aaron Rodgers, but just in, in general across the board with sports, with life, with everything else. Uh, how much of responsibility falls on the shoulders of the person that people are speculating about and the media is like in a frenzy about? How much responsibility do they have to step up and and basically put out the flames? Do Because I could hear either argument and not along with either argument. Where do you land on that? That's very interesting. I personally have a policy of never say anything. Okay. Um, I think that to me, if someone is sort of coming at you or spinning out these sorts of, as long as if I felt it were sort of defamatory in a way that was based on something not. Yeah. No, actually, no. Yeah. Even then, even then, as long as I, if I personally believe that I haven't done anything wrong and that I stand by every decision I've made, I just wouldn't ever engage. If I personally feel like I slipped up, I would say, hey, I slipped up. But otherwise, I wouldn't, I I don't think that that person has, to me, the greatest satisfaction is knowing someone's talking shit and having them think I either didn't hear it or didn't care and then being successful and they have to just deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, do I know, know what you mean. mean. Yeah. What I, do you it, think? What's your take? Well, I, I guess like, because I don't, I don't know, because I'm, I'm hearing Aaron Rodgers talk about the media and part of me is like, dude, you could have just, you could have squashed all of this like very easily with like one statement or one whatever. But then again, I realized like you put out one statement, then we would all just pick that statement apart and be like, now hang on. Here's what the is thing this? Why like- did he choose that word instead of the other word? Um, and it's, it, and I guess it's not his responsibility that all of like, it's not his responsibility to track what you and I and everyone else is saying about him and decide when he's going to jump in and not. 
Um, no, but, we, but uh, yeah. he, his mistake there, however, is that he even brought the media up at all. The real power play would have been to just not address any of the rumors or say, yeah. like, by putting out a yeah. shot that's like, oh, well, the media, it's like, oh, that, so you that tells do me, care. Yeah, you that tells me care. you're aware of it and all of that. Yeah. yeah. It's not quite to this level, but it'd be like, like, I feel like NBA players would be the most likely to do this, where they just, like, tweet the eye emoji during free yes. agency period or something. And... And then everyone goes crazy, and then they're like, "What? Well, I didn't do anything. I just what? I, I can't tweet the eye emoji now. Like right. I can't tweet the. Like come on, dude. We know what. Come We're on. We're not that we stupid. Yeah, yeah. Um, I. But I don't know if Aaron really did that. His his eye emojis was just pictures with Miles Teller. And yeah, Maui, which is but, way cooler. <laughs> which is, <laughs> um, um, I have one. Yeah. I have an Aaron Rodgers question for you. Okay. Do you think that Aaron Rodgers is chuggy? Charlotte, I gotta be honest with you. I have no idea what chuggy means, and I think that makes me chuggy to not well, know what it means. Or does that no. make me not chuggy to not know what chuggy? Am I, I hold on? Let me answer that question first. By not knowing chuggy? what chuggy, by not knowing what chuggy means, is not knowing what chuggy means. Does that make me chuggy or not chuggy? No, I think that makes you not chuggy, to be okay. honest, because chuggy is. I saw that. So chuggy is sort of like. And some people have taken issue with it because they're like, why don't you just let people like what they like? But it's sort mm -hmm. of a more self-aware kind of basic person. So it's someone, it's like usually a, an older millennial woman who has like the, you know, life's better at the beach signs or whatever, but sort of mm. owns it and isn't, and is like, is aware that they're doing it kind of, as opposed to just being basic where you don't really realize you're, you're not self-aware about it. And to me... That's sort of like, okay, whatever. But like Aaron, this picture of Aaron Rodgers right here. Am I pointing? No. That wearing, way. wearing the office t-shirt. Am I pointing at it? There we and go. And the massive wearing, sunglasses. Yeah. That's like, that's like, a man tell bun. me you went to college in the 2000s without yeah. telling me you went to college in the 2000s, which feels to me sort of chuggy. Like he's aware that he is doing something. Like he's wearing an office shirt. Shout out. Didn't your buddies at yeah, that's homage, homage. That Yeah, that's homage. Yeah, that's an homage shirt. Um. Uh, just hearing you describe it, I'm I'm very chuggy, by the yeah, way. Yeah, no, you like, are. Like, I'm extremely chuggy. Like I I wear Tommy Bahama and Yeti, <laughs> and like the only I, I I have I buy like nothing but Yeti products when I go to the beach. <laughs> Same. Oh my God. Wait, are we both chuggy? <laughs> yeah, and I uh, like whenever I buy shoes, I always just buy the most basic shoes on earth because I just know like I'm not a sneak. Like I I wear Chuck Taylors all the time because. <laughs> One, I'm from Indiana, and it's kind of like a signature shoe of Indiana, but also it's just the most basic <laughs> shoe that exists, I think, is a Chuck Day <laughs> or Chucks. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Oh, I'm man. horrified because I'm realizing that, A, I'm chuggy intentionally. Like, I wear... Yeah. I wear oh, I'm definitely Tommy Bahama. I, it's shirts. definitely intentional. Like I, I drive a Camry for God's sakes because yeah, I like Google thing, like Mark. what's the most what's the what's the most like what's the lowest risk car I can buy that like <laughs> no one will point it out and be like, dude, what a loser. You drive that? I don't have the balls to like try to get like a different like, you know to, to drive a This I, is blowing my mind. This is name so a, name true. a cool car. I don't have the balls to try to drive that. So I was like, what is the what are some of the most popular cars? I googled. I literally googled like what is a popular car. <laughs> it was like uh, Toyota Camry, I think, is pretty hot. And I was like, done. Give done. Me that one. <laughs> oh my god. Well, so but at least you own it. Like I, the problem is like I, I too only buy Yeti products. I also wear Tommy <laughs> Bahama and like sort of ironically, but it's not ironic. I, not and then, ironic. And then no. the other clothes that I wear, I'm trying too hard not to be chuggy that I think that I'm just automatically like I'm, if I try to be trendy, but I, I also feel like I'm just very clueless a lot of the time so i'm sort of just doing whatever and i don't know if is, that's chuggy or not is there a term for uh my one of my best friends who listens to this show and mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm doing a little test here because if he doesn't text me about this then i'll know that he's not been he stopped listening so right. uh, we'll see we'll see what happens here uh one of my best friends and, and uh, i've known forever he does uh he he buys all the 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 chuggy stuff if you will mm -hmm. but he always buys the off-brand because he like he thinks he's smarter than the game he's like the guy that and i'm not talking like kirkland i'm not talking like he goes to costco i'm talking like he bought like a vacuum a remote like a uh uh what do you call it the roomba uh yeah. the 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 you know you know the roomba yeah, yeah. we all know what the roomba is he bought like a japanese version of that for like a third of the price and he like you go to his house and he's like yeah you know it's basically a roomba it does all the exact same thing it was but i'm not i'm not stupid i'm not gonna like waste my money on the name brand that's stupid so my <gasps> like honestly i could program it better he loves his Android 
phone for that reason. Oh, he loves, no. <laughs> and he, he swears. He's like, I love quality stuff. I'm just not an idiot. I'm not a sheep that just buys name brands. Is there like a, wow. you know what I mean? Like, like he still is yes. buying all the basic stuff. Like he's like, you, like, you have to have a smartphone, dude. You have to have a, I guess smartphone's a bad example. You have to have like. No, you know no, no. Saying? A smartphone is a good example. So people are like, Samsung can actually technically do way more stuff than the iPhone, but everyone's yeah. been brainwashed to think that the iPhone is the only cool phone because of Apple's sleek design, even though the battery breaks every three years. You know what I mean? Yeah. The sa- but the same way that you and I would have like very basic stuff, and, and the sa- <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. like the stuff, he will still have that stuff. So he still like buys absurd stuff. Like you go to his house, he's got like new gadgets and new yeah. like stuff he doesn't need, like crazy. Yeah. Uh, but it's always like a uh, uh, an off brand thing from like overseas that he's like, you know, those of us in the know. Yeah. Like I, I yeah, I would never buy Callaway golf clubs. Are you nuts? <laughs> That's a waste of money, dude. Okay, gotta- so <laughs> I don't know which is worse though, because I'm the opposite. I will only buy the like n- what everyone assumes is the nicest, even if it's shittier and costs more. Yeah, yeah, I'm dead yeah. serious. I'm like, if this isn't like, I've decided that Yetis keep things coldest the longest, even though yes. they probably there could be a company that's cheaper that rivals them. But I'm he like, ha- he uh, has he'll he'll write in and tell us which one it is because he has a cooler that's a, he's like it's it's a Yeti but not a Yeti, and I'm like then it's not a Yeti. Yeah, but like I, <laughs> I like if I get. Like, I would never not get Nikes. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm I'm an asshole. Like, I don't... And I kind of admire your friend. Like, either... I mean, I own it. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm probably spending way too... Like, even cereal. I'm like, I'm not going to get... Or, like, bread at the store. I'm yeah. like, why would I get the... Yeah. I think I want to pretend I'm just, like, loaded. I want to <laughs> pretend I'm just, like, balling out. Oh, my God. Uh, to answer your question, to bring it back to the topic at hand, I think Aaron Rodgers, like, he knows what he's doing. He knows, yeah. he knows, He because you're saying, like, is the question, this look he had coming to training camp, was it orchestrated? Was it cultivated? Was uh, curated, yes. I guess, might be the word. Was, sure. was he was he spending a lot of time wondering or was it an organic thing where he's just like, I'll wake up and throw this stuff on. I think it's, I think it's the former. I think he definitely was like, <laughs> what's a cool shirt. What's a cool, what are cool glasses? How many times did he put his hair up in the man bun and take it down and be like, no, I didn't get that right. I got yeah, it. Yeah. It's very smooth. If yeah. you look at that picture, yeah. his hair is very smooth. I, I could also see though, him think him trying to reverse psychology us into thinking he didn't think about it or think that he is being <laughs> ironic by wearing like 2000 style. Do you know what I mean? It, it yeah. somehow, whenever Aaron Rodgers does anything, it feels like a little smirky or mischievous. And I don't know if I should trust him. Cause I think he's just doing performance art all the time. Yes. Yes. And that's right? why we love him. That's, that's exactly why we, why we love him. That's why he's the mascot of the people sports podcast. Aaron don't retire, but also we retire. Need you. Retire and come on our Con- show. <laughs> continue to retire and, but also not retire. I want yes. you to live in a perpetual state of uh, being potentially retired. retired. Potentially, yeah, but being potentially retired. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There we that's go. what. All right. That's what we want. Uh, enough of that. What? Yes. Uh, do, do we want to dive into the Olympics? Do you? Do you? How, how do you want to do this? I mean, we usually do the stuff we don't want to talk about. I think Aaron Rodgers kind of checked that box. I, d- yeah. I didn't know if you had any. Do you have any Cleveland Guardian stakes you want to fire off before no, we get to I, Olympics? <laughs> no. First of okay, all, I'm my just only, giving you the opportunity. My I'm only take, you the opportunity. My only take on the Cleveland Guardians. I don't give a. I really could not care less. Uh, but I do think it's a little rude to the XFL because there were the New York Guardians and then Cleveland just swoops up on, you know, out of the ashes, dancing on the XFL's grave and names their team the Guardians. They they literally took a, a, a roller derby team name. The Cleveland Guardians exist. It's no a, way. Did you, did you know no, this? No, I didn't the, know that. The Cleveland Guardians are a uh, men's roller. Well, not men's because there were women on the team, but it's like my understanding was roller derby was like always just a women's thing. I thought so, too. Um, but then I saw a picture of the Cleveland Guardians and there's a lot of men on the team. So I'm not really sure huh. how that happened. But All right. uh, whatever. There's a roller derby team. They're called yeah. the Cleveland Guardians. They apparently own ClevelandGuardians.com. Um, and now oh it's like kind of a uh, thing that's looming is this lawsuit, this negotiation, what's going to happen next? How all can that you sort be stuff. so stupid not to Google your <laughs> not new Google. team name? Like what the, <laughs> who is Jesus? 
I mean, maybe they did. Do you and remember just didn't when care. we were we were trying to think of a name for the podcast, and we we, we I think we spent more time than the Cleveland yes. Indians slash Guardians did uh, <gasps> coming up with their new name. The Cleveland Shredders we loved. Yeah. Do you remember that? No, I don't mean that. I mean when you and I were trying to name our podcast when we Google, we're like, oh. <laughs> and, and then we found like like we had a couple different ideas, and we were like, no, 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 it looks like some high schoolers and yes. Uh, in Waterloo, Iowa. There you go. There's a <laughs> shout out. There's a small town. Shout Iowa. out Des Moines. Um, Des Moines. Some some high schoolers in Waterloo already have a podcast called whatever it is we wanted to name it. So I guess we can't do that. Yeah, and we can't, can't like, do that. We kept like doing process of elimination. And the Cleveland Indians slash Guardians. I assume, I, I assume they're going to still be called the Guardians. You can't walk that back, right? You can't be I like, I don't think oh, you shit. can announce it. And then be like, oh, oh shoot, sorry, realize, Roller Derby yeah, was there first. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I guess uh, Guardians will stick. But uh, that's that's more fascinating to me than anything else. Than, Do you care about the name at all? No, I don't yeah. care. I, cool. They changed. They, they got rid of two letters and they added four in place <laughs> of the two letters. That's what happened. And they're still using the font. Yeah. It's 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 all it's remarkably dumb, but I also don't it's all care. Stupid. And and as we talked about originally when we realized they were dropping Indians was uh I stand by that point that all names are stupid. All professional names are yeah. absolutely stupid. So You can't cares? name one that when you think about it isn't is the Phoenix Suns? It's stupid. Name one, I'll say it's stupid. Doesn't matter what it is. The, the, the Patriots. The coolest... What an stupid. idiotic <laughs> name for a team. Are you kidding? And we don't even, even the ones... we don't even we, the ones we, that are kind of cool, like the 49ers say, because it's like, oh, you know, 1849, the gold right. I'm like, stupid. Still stupid. <laughs> it's not cool because, first not of all, cool, it's stupid. not written out. It's two yeah. letters and two numbers smushed together. Three letters. Whatever. I can't count. They're all anyway, stupid. That one uh, actually always drove me crazy. I was like, either write it out or just do 49S. Not to mention, what always drove me, you're going to get me fired up because I'm, I'm fascinated by Wild West history. I'm reading a book about uh, the water crisis in the West right now and how the West was won via water. Yeah. <laughs> it's Dude, unbelievable. Great why, book. Can I borrow that after you? Yeah, actually, it's actually an insane book. I'm, I'm the guy who like reads one page and then I'll turn to an empty room and I'll be like, this is crazy. And then like <laughs> Moses is looking at me like, Dude, I don't speak English. But, cool. I feel like you'll also are you excited that the next season of yellowstone is coming out yes yes okay. yeah. that's basically that, what the, right. the book i'm reading is basically like yellowstone okay. just like back in the day um but anyway it it, it uh i i the, the reason i bring this up because we were talking about the 49ers it, it it's on my mind that yeah. the gold rush was in like sacramento you know <laughs> not san francisco and yes. like i understand that people came into san francisco bay and like san francisco blew up because of the gold rush but I feel like the branding of taking the 49ers, we've kind of like, like San Francisco should, there should be a little kickback to Sacramento. Of like, we're sorry we took this from you. Or like the Kings, yeah. the Sacramento Kings should change their name to like The gold. 49ers? The 49ers. Gold? The 48ers. <laughs> the 48 like we, we found it first. We were here. This was. <laughs> All we right. got our covered wagons here a whole year earlier. I'm using the B word a lot. I'm, a, I'm sorry to anyone listening. I'm feeling sweary today too. Know, I've stopped myself happened. from. I thought it was uh, let's move on to what All we right, really want to talk on. about because we're excited about this. We are we are uh, two kids that love the Olympics. Is that fair I to say, Charlotte? Yes, I watch. I think I have watched every hour of the Olympics that has been on my television. I'm not entirely sure how to stream everything. I can't yeah. really figure out the tech part. So when I turn the television on, I watch what is on. So I've missed some things, but I've watched everything that it is convenient for me to watch. We need, so let's put it that we, way. We need two different channels for the Olympics. That uh, one is for the olds, and one is for the not olds. That's what I would say. And the okay. olds, we will, uh, you know, the the USA men's basketball can play at two a.m. Eastern, and mm -hmm. then we will air it at seven p.m. that night. <laughs> yes. And we'll put that on the olds channel, right? Okay. And that's Are like, we? We're so, olds, right? I think I'm old. Yeah, yeah. I'm old. Uh, and then the other channel is like this is like everything's live at all times yes like because it is it has been very confusing for me that's how i know i'm i'm one of the olds i will watch um i i'm, I'm watching a lot of stuff but i'll use volleyball as an example because I, I found myself watching an insane amount of volleyball we'll get okay. to that in a second um i will watch in the morning a a u.s women's u.s men's sometimes not even the u.s playing a volleyball game Later that day, I will watch. I'll put on. I'll, I'll, I'll like. I'll pull up the. I'll be like, oh, I got some free time. I'll throw the Olympics on. I'll pull up this TV guide. It'll say volleyball's on. I'll click on it. I'll watch the exact same game. It'll be like in the second or third set before I realize. Oh, I've already seen this. And I don't know. 
I want to believe that's not my fault. It mm. obviously is, but at the same time, like I'm seeing enough people complain that it's like hard to find stuff that I'm like, maybe I'm not stupid, but boy, you feel stupid in that moment when you're like, wait a second, did I just watch 45 minutes of a game that I just watched <laughs> like four hours ago? Like how well, did that this, happen? This is my theory about sports. Like you could put on an NFL game from last season that I watched and I would not remember it, and I would have no idea what the outcome was. And, and I watched I, every NFL game. I can hear, I can hear people rolling their eyes. I can, you know, our listeners are. I, I can feel them saying to themselves, mm. "You idiots!" <laughs> it says live in the corner of the television. Like if it says live, it's live. If it doesn't, it's, it's not. not. It's not though, because I'll say I on my YouTube TV. That's what I use. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had it like. Funny. Like, it'll automatically, like, record stuff. Yeah. And then you'll go to, like, play it. And what it recorded was live. <laughs> you understand, Charlotte? Yes. Oh, oh so, right, like, right, right. So, like, what they're playing is yeah. it says live in the corner. But I'm not watching it live. But I don't know that because I see live. So, I'm like, this is definitely live. I'm <laughs> sure people are talking about this on Twitter. I got to go see what people are saying. Nobody's saying anything about this. And I'm like, is this like, and then I'll like Google some more and it's like, oh, that game happened two days ago. <laughs> what the Listen, hell? Mark, I'm with you. I don't, first of all, I can't wrap my head around the time change. I don't know if it's yesterday or tomorrow in Tokyo. When it's Mike Tirico, <laughs> yeah, it's both. When Mike Tirico, come, cause he's, he like comes on in his little Olympic perch, you know, it looks like a tree house that he's sitting in and it's always daytime, but it's nighttime always. here. And he says yeah. things like yesterday. And I'm like, do you mean yes. this morning? Or do you mean, like, I have absolutely no idea. I can't figure out time zones. And this sti this is, to me, this goes back to an, a rant we went on way in the early days of the show where we were like, we have to get rid of time zones. I think so. I, I stand by that. I think time zones, the, 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 the world should have one time. And, yes. and and again, you say that, and everyone's like, "That's insane." It's How, not like, though. Like we're, we we time our our clocks to the sun, and like sometimes the sun is up in some parts of the world, and it's not in others. Like, what are you saying? And I'm saying, just change it to where, like, I don't know, and and. In some places, they wake up at 2 a.m. and that's when the sun rises. And yeah. other places, it rises at, at midnight. In other places, it's, you know, the sun rises at 4 p.m. If you think yeah, about that's it, already, it's all arbitrary, Charlotte. You, we should okay, all so get on here, one time. Let, I want to give the people an example. You're on the West Coast, I'm on the yes. East Coast. If we're recording something, it's three my time and 12 your time. I have yes. to do math if yes. if we say it, let's record at 12 your time. You have to do math if I say let's record at three my time what if we just said what if that what if the time that we were what if it was like we are both one. on it's one it's one o'clock it's one it's one and it's 1 i might be closer to dinner than lunch and you might be closer to breakfast and lunch but we both do whatever the yeah. heck we want so who, who cares? cares it's all arbitrary the numbers are arbitrary it doesn't change the sun if we change exactly. it it's not like the sun's gonna change I don't think. I don't know. I have to double check well, that. Well, we haven't I don't tried know. yet. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Pump but, the brakes. Um, yeah. I, Let's the, listen but the to problem, the science. <laughs> the problem with that is that basically we're going to have to pick. Th there's going to be one time zone in this world that mm -hmm. won't change. Like, mm -hmm. that'll be the one that, like, we go with. You know yes. what I mean? Yes. And who gets, who gets to decide that is well, going to be the question. Because... Everyone in the Eastern time zone is like definitely us. Uh, everyone in the West, everyone in the Pacific time zone, which uh, I, it, I don't know if it's true, the entire Pacific time zone, certainly true of LA. Uh, LA is the most narcissistic place on planet Earth. <laughs> LA people do not change a single goddamn thing for anybody, mm -hmm. for any mm -hmm. reason whatsoever. They are not changing anything. Right. Um, and then I feel like China is not just gonna like shrug their shoulders and say, okay, we'll do whatever you want, America. You know so, who's gonna be the, the sleeper biggest wrench in our plan? Who? The UK, because there'll be like Greenwich Mean Time. Are you kidding me? Oh, they'll be yeah. like, we had it first. And we'll yeah. all have to be like, yeah, but you don't matter. Yeah. And then they'll be like, we literally colonize the whole world and we're like right that's why you yeah. don't matter yeah and they're like we the whole reason we have clocks is because of us is what england will be saying and we're like, and we're like dude no. what that's not true and they're that like yes it is that way yes it is we did we fought a lot of wars to rewrite the history books so you would believe that so <laughs> like, Damn uh, anyway all right um, so we've made it clear that we don't know when anything is happening yeah. or what is live or and also the news alerts it's like we get we find out what happened before they happen on tv and then i'm watching it and then i'm like oh that's what they were talking about so it's yeah all just very... it's, that's what i'm saying like you have to have like an old experience and a young experience which yeah. like i guess 
I don't know if that solves my problems because I live in both worlds a little bit. Like I'm mm -hmm. on the internet, so I kind of would see this. If I was turning into the old channel, I would have already seen the spoilers anyway, I guess. Right. So that's frustrating. But yeah, it's, it's I don't know. There, there's got to be a better way. And I think the answer is just have the Olympics in America every year so we don't have to laugh. <laughs> uh, you solved just it. Done. You fixed have, it, man. have the Olympics always in America. We don't have this problem. What are we doing? <laughs> Why don't all the other countries get on board with that? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, anyway, Listen. what uh, what I want to talk about the Olympics, but here's yes. my fear uh, in terms of uh, having a coherent conversation. Mm -hmm. I have a thousand stray thoughts that don't yes. all tie together. How do we want to go about delivering these thoughts? So I do too. We both have needed a place to say all of the things that we've thought of as we've been watching. So I think we should just alternate. I think you should say, and we don't even have to really, you know, if there's something that's a quick thought, we can be like, all right, noted, thank you, and then move on. Mm -hmm. If there's something that, you know, needs more discussion, we'll delve into it. But uh, I wish I, I would have color coded my thoughts now, like put like red for rant. You know, like, make sure you go on a rant for this thought. Oh Green is How like, many rants just... do you have? <laughs> 13, 14, yeah, 15, yeah. 16. Uh... Um, can, I do, can I get out ahead of, the, of something first? Please. This is, okay, so the show's ethos is like, we have to talk about things that are fun and funny. And I want to talk quickly about something that isn't because it's Simone Biles. And this is something that everybody's talked about. And it feels like the biggest story in the sports world right now. And I just want to say that everybody who said that this was brave of her and selfless and that she didn't want to cost her team a medal is totally right. And I think that an aspect of it that I would just love to add to is that anyone saying like, oh, it was a mental issue, not a physical issue. I think that's actually kind of bull because mm -hmm. your brain if you can't make your body do what it needs to do, which is what we saw happen when she missed the twist in her vault, like that's a pretty physical issue. Yeah. So, so the argument that like, oh, she quit or she let her team down. First of all, she's the reason they're there in the first place. Second of all, she didn't compete so that they would have a better chance at still meddling. Yes. And she was brave enough to own her decision and do what she needed to do and then show back up on the floor for her teammates, knowing that she was going to be the only thing anyone was talking about, but she pushed that aside and cheered them on. And I just think that is very impressive. And we don't talk enough about the connection between your body and your mind. It's as though you should be as those are two separate things when it's like, no, it's all like, it's all, it's all the whole package. And, um, that's yeah, my, I know that's my Simone and Biles thought. The nature of gymnastics is such that, uh, you can't power through it really no. there's no there's no such thing as like like you can't uh if 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 you're getting these she's got the yips that's like that's basically yeah. what happened yeah. she has the yips if you have the yips in baseball and and i i watched uh I, i'm a cubs fan john lester had mm -hmm. the yips throwing to first base for his basically the entire time he was on the cubs before he even got to the cubs he could not he could not throw pickup throws in first place he couldn't even really throw like he couldn't even field a ball and throw it to first base like he just like there's something right. about throwing to first base it freaked him out he had the yips uh, you know what John Lester would do? He would just like toss it underhand if he had to. He would yeah, like just right. kind of find. You can't like toss it underhand when you're doing like a triple whoop de doo stick a maru. I think no, is the actual. Right. That's the technical term. <laughs> that's the technical term. You can't like just do. Oh, okay. I'm gonna do the the stick a maru, but I'm gonna do like an underhand. Like I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can make that calculation in your head in midair. So even like like I don't think there's any. You can't do a 70% gymnastics. I don't think that's no, how it works. No, you that's can't. What I'm, yeah, I, I'm like thinking through that. I'm like, that's... You're going to severely injure yeah, yourself. Also, yeah. I rewatched the Carrie Struggs uh, vault yeah. where she did it basically on a broken ankle and then collapses afterwards. And I'm watching this, and it's set to inspirational music, and it's like she yeah. powered through to win for her team. And I almost threw up. I was like, this is so hard to watch. How was that? How was the narrative around that? Like, look at this selfless well, person doing this for gold when, like, you watch it and you're like, oh, my God, who let her, who put her out there? That's like, <laughs> that's, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. And I was but like, oh, is, my God. This is why I don't want to talk about this at all. And I, I swear to God, I don't, because I, I feel like the, the conversation around Simone Biles is just a race to the bottom in terms yes. of, of the takes you have on this, where I, she, she didn't quit. Like you said, she, her, her withdrawing from the event was, was best for the team. Right. Like that was, that was literally if, 
if, if she stayed out there and and screwed up on her routine it would cost the team stuff so she was like i you know it's like like the equivalent of of your arm feels like it's gonna fall off and you're the quarterback of the team you don't power through you're like that's gonna i'm gonna go out there and throw exactly. ducks for interceptions and it's gonna cost you. i want to win the game this is the best move to win the game um so i i don't think that's true at the same time like i feel like uh, she came out and she said that that part of the reason like she she straight up said that this was a a the, the idea of carrying the weight of the world on her shoulders the idea of being the goat the idea of like all eyes are on me kind of played a role in all of this and so she she wants to like step away from that and like the moment she steps away from that there's like a flood of like let's put all eyes on simone and t and, and talk about how big of a hero she is and how and i i feel like that's a little backwards too that it's like you know, I just, like I, to I think, shove my, let's shove microphones in her face and let's exalt her and let's like, and it's like maybe isn't isn't that kind of what led to this point? I don't know. The whole no, point I is, think you're right. I, I is, see, and, I see what you're and saying. And I gotta say, like there is there is validity to like not encouraging your kid to quit if something gets hard, but like at the same time, I hear I say those words out loud and everyone's like, "What do you mean? Are you say, like are you saying she quit?" No, but the point is, Charlotte, you cannot have a discussion about this. It is like it was a race to the bottom. You yes. you plant your because. You know, like I even I even felt it, it feels almost gross to say what I said, but because you're like, oh, am I just capitalizing on the very thing that put her in this position yeah. in the first place? I, I guess I will just leave it as I think culturally it is a good thing that she can do something like that. And there can be any positive reaction yeah. in that people are like, oh, OK, maybe your brain and your body are connected. And it's like, oh, what, I, what, a, my, what a concept. My ultimate stance is that every situation is different. And I think yes. Simone Biles deciding in that moment that she can't do a triple whoop de doo stick a maroo stick a maroo uh, does not mean that when your son is halfway through his football season, and he wants to quit football that like the lesson he and he, he, he that he's gonna say like simone biles quit why can't i quit dad you know like and I, like that's a different like you don't have to like see what simone biles decides or uh other athletes that are choosing to take like naomi osaka had a, a mental health situation where she mm -hmm. withdrew from stuff. like you don't have to use those as examples and then apply them to like what lessons are these teaching our kids it's like when those when those lessons with our kids come up why don't we evaluate the context of those decisions in that yes. situation and then make the, you know, cause that's like, so, I, you but know, the like, problem mark is that that requires nuance. Yeah. And that's and where I, I am that, with this. I and think like, that you we've like lost it. I don't think yeah, there's any nuance honestly, anymore. Me just saying that just pissed people. I'm sure I pissed someone off. Cause they're like, it, it sounds like you think that Simone quit on her team. And I'm like, Sure, no, man. you said that well, you said that well. Sure, I man. I guess that's cause, cause I do, I do think about that. Like I wouldn't, I don't, I wouldn't want my son to like be faced with, I don't even have a son, but like, I wouldn't want my son to be faced with a challenge and decide that something's too hard and I'm going to quit. Obviously, like you want people to like power through adversity, but at the same time, this is a good thing. And I think it's, it's good to, it, the, the point I'm trying to make is that it's, it's up to each person in each moment to make your decision for yourself yes. and, and, or your parents to like, so quit. But, I also think, you know though, I mean? that the difference here is that Simone has powered through so much before that it's sort yeah, of like, yes. oh, OK, if you're if your kid won all state 50,000 times and then had one yes, bad game, then, yes, like, yeah, think yes, of it, you know, so. Yes, exactly. Um, exactly. But but I think like these moments happen and we try to take them as like th this is this w whatever we decide as a culture, as a society with this moment right here, this is indicative of who we are as a country, as a yes. community, as whatever. And it's not. <laughs> it's this not, is Simone Biles uh, making a decision for Simone Biles. And that's it. And boom. that's really it. That's all but, it is. That, let's and, put a bow on it. And if you want to raise your kid to never quit, do that. You're free to do that. That's fine. And I'm sure he's going to learn. He or she will learn a lot of great lessons in you raising them that way. And if you want to, if you're someone who saw this and you're like, that's great. If my kid ever says like, I want to step away from something, I'm going to let them do it. That's fine too. And I'm sure like that might be, you know, like evaluate it on your own. That's why right. I got like, right. by the time, by the time I even heard about this story, to be honest with you, cause like the gymnastics happened very, very early on the West mm -hmm. coast. Mm -hmm. um, by the time I woke up and saw this story, I was already over it because for that reason, it just felt like a race to the bottom where it was like, you either I have to say though, Simone Biles is a quitter and a right. horrible example, or she's like a hero. And we, should we start building the statue now? Like, should I we... just think that the way that we <laughs> just addressed it is sort of like good, you know, like yeah. it there, it's like, okay, she, you know, it's, it's, it's not, I don't know. It I, doesn't I, have to be a take. It's just frustrating. Cause you can't like, it just, just, I, I, I know this is a, 
I don't know, an enlightened sense. It's the what, what do they call it? Like this synth, the guy in the center who is enlightened, where he's just like, guys, both sides are bad, and they're like, oh my god, you're a genius, you know? Like, uh, I don't want to come across as that guy, but uh, I don't know. It, it it is frustrating that that uh, this isn't a unique observation, but it's just hard to have discussions about anything in this country anymore because it's just well, like. Think- Nobody you don't have discussions, you have things, arguments. Yeah, nobody sees things for what they are. They see things for what they represent. And it's like, yes. what if they don't represent anything right now? What if it yeah. what if what it represents is someone doing the right thing for themselves and you can take yeah. away whatever you want to take away from that? Yes. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. There you go. Thank you. Look at us. Now let's have some more fun talking about okay. the Olympics because I have takes. Right. Number one, skateboarding and surfing don't belong. Get them out of here. Get them out of the Olympics. I'm going to start. I'm going to pivot very quickly to just talking about skateboarding and surfing because. Okay, here's my question I, for you, Mark. Do you hate skateboarding no, and surfing? No, the exact opposite. I love them because that's a great question, Charlotte. It sounded like I hated those sports. I, uh, I, I, I live in Southern California, not to brag, kind of the, kind of like a, the, the Mecca. You don't say. Of skateboarding Wait. And, and surfing. You Do know, you, have so. you skateboarded? <laughs> Are you a skater? I have walked, I have watched a lot of guys skateboard and surf. Okay, so I feel like I get the culture a little bit. Uh, no, in all seriousness, I'm watching this because I've been, I've been watching a lot of skateboarding, some of the, some of the surfing, not a ton of the surfing, but uh, it feels like uh, my read on skateboarding and surfing. In all seriousness, living in Los Angeles and I and going to to watch the the I, I I go to Venice every so often and just watch the 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 kids tear it up at the venice skate park i'm not even kidding it's right you there just on the sounded beach like, what's that movie the gif of steve uh, we don't know how to say his name steve yeah yeah buscemi buscemi yeah. uh how, how with do you do the, yeah how, how i do literally do, do. i'll walk moses on the beach I'll, I'll stop by the skate park and i'm like this is pretty sick these guys are good i, I enjoy watching them uh skate and then sometimes i'll do the same i'll walk on the pier like venice or manhattan beach or santa wherever usually not santa monica that's that's chuggy chuggy is that the word santa monica is totally uh, chuggy uh, <laughs> uh I'll walk on the pier and you'll see people. Manhattan Beach is a good one to do it. There are a lot of people that will uh, uh, be surfing and I'll just like kind of observe them surfing. And my whole point, Charlotte, is in observing this firsthand, my read on it as a guy who's not part of that culture is that this culture, these aren't sports so much as their art. Mm. And the idea that like, and they feel very counterculture. They feel like we we're not here to like, we're, we're here for vibes, man. We're here for vibes. That's what we're here for. We're not here for scores. We're not here for like solid runs. We're here so for just vibes. So then, how do you vibes. feel about how do you feel about like competitions outside of the Olympics? About skateboarding competitions? I don't think I like surf- it. Yeah. At least like at least like the X Game packages. The X Games packages it as like this is extreme and extreme. we're here for vibes. Yeah. Right. But but the Olympic like it feels counterculture and you cannot get more mainstream culture than the Olympics. You know what I mean? It's so, like to see the the marriage of the two. Yeah. Like I could see like you went gold in skateboarding. I could see you going back to or, or gold in surfing or whatever. I could see you going back to like your crew and them just kicking your ass. You oh, know? Totally. Like showing up and be like, hey guys, I went gold. How cool is that? And they're like Get the hell out of here, you poser, you know? Okay, okay, here's the thing. This ties exactly into why, you know how everyone, <laughs> you know how everyone always talks about, like, people hooking up in the Olympic Village? Mm-hmm. This, yes. I, every year there's a group of people where I'm like, oh, they're the hot ticket. Who knows how this is, how COVID is affecting all this, but whatever. So I think that the skateboarders, first of all, they are all, you know, the ones who are not 13 years old, because, let me start over. If you're 13 years old and you win gold in skateboarding, that's cool. Yeah. Like if you're 13 and you do it, like you, that is awesome. If you're 32 and you do it, it's like, come on, man. Like just, you know, go back to the, and that's not true either. Cause it's still get cool, a job. Yeah. Get a job. <laughs> but if you're what in I'm trying to say, you're doing sports, get a job, get a real job. If you're come in your thirties and you're talking about people doing sports, get a real job. Um, I think of, that these people walking around the Olympic Village, not only are they physically very attractive, they don't give a shit. And the yeah. most attractive thing is someone who doesn't care yes. about, is like nonchalant. They're being like, they're like, oh yeah, you know, I'm here, but you know, I'm kind of yes. over the, like I'm too cool for the Olympics, but like I'm yes. still doing it. Do you know what I mean? I yes. think that plays into their overall vibe where I don't really believe them as they're doing this, that they're taking it seriously. Yes. But to, to that point, I guess that's like why I don't, I don't think that these should exist. I, I think like, I think, you know, who you should give a gold medal to is you should, you should recruit people to go all ar- around all over the world to skate, to s- skate parks, to, to surf sites, whatever they're called beaches, I guess, but 
wherever <laughs> people are surfing um and ask them to sign up for the olympics be like it's it, this the, the olympics has decided that anybody can enter and we're trying to get everybody to sign up and basically take down a bunch of signatures and the one guy or girl who does not sign up give them the gold medal <laughs> <laughs> Cause like yes. If, cause it, yes, if you're really cool, <laughs> you know, like if, if you really think that you're too cool for this, then you're actually now you get it. You get the sport <laughs> and you win. And they're that like, was, I don't want it. I watched this. I, I think I've referenced this on the show before. The, the documentary HBO did called a uh, momentum generation. It was about all these guys, these surfers that like grew up together. Kelly Slater and his yeah, crew. Yeah, yeah. I, like they're all famous and they're all great. So surfers. Cool. And whenever they talk about Kelly Slater, they're like, he's psychotic. He was like the Michael Jordan of surfing. And like, he wanted to kill everybody and all this and kelly slater like would get on camera and he's like yeah man i was i was ruthless i was trying to kill these dudes and all that and you can just tell like the other guys were like clowning kelly slater kind of how they're talking about it. they're like yeah kelly wins everything but like he's kind of a douche because that's like not what serving's about and right. that, like i would never do what he does and i guess he thinks he's cool and kelly's like yeah i'm cool i, I win everything that. how cool am i and I'm like, dude, I don't think, you know, so that's my, that's, my that read on, uh, that's my read on surfing in the Olympics is like, this just feels, it, this, serving this game, it just feels like not Olympics. And I, I mean that for in a loving way. So that's my first I'm, thought. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on that with my first thought, which is that I also agree with you that surfing and skateboarding should not be in the Olympics because, first of all, waves, you can't control that. Like mm, they're surfing in the ocean. It's not fair. What, how are you going to like at least slalom canoe, which trust me, we will get to in a second is on a man-made course, but like they're like, there happened to be a typhoon one day. Like, okay, cool. They got good waves. Like what yeah. about the days when there's not that? So anyway, that's, but no one talked about, I was watching, I, I watched a lot of the skateboarding during the women's final competition where they had to land one trick. I barely understand how this works, but they had like four tricks and they would do them one at a time, and it would contribute yeah. to their final score. Every single woman fell, like, badly. And the one of the Japanese women got up, could barely walk, and the announcers aren't saying anything about it, Mark. Did you see this? They were like, oh, that's going to cost her points. And I was like, is anyone talking about the fact <laughs> that, like, she can't move around right now? And they're, like, going to have to try again. And I was like, are we sure? So uh, I just think I, I don't think that skateboarding no. looks fun in the Olympics because like the point is that you can try stuff and fall and like go get a beer or whatever. Yeah, Instead, they yeah. have to like like what? It but felt the reason very the, the reason they weren't talking about it. Yeah, is because I think that's part of the skateboarding culture is like you just break your arm and that's almost like a badge of honor. <laughs> but it know? was like really brutal to watch. I was like, can someone check on these ladies, please? Like every single one fell. I had to turn it off. I was like, this isn't fun. I want to watch they skateboarding, start, not skate falling. They start like judging the falls. They, yeah. They're just like, all right, everyone's going to fall. I guess uh, that was a, can we get like a standard? What happened to the one through 10 rating system? That yeah, I don't know. I can't shout out under to the NBA slam dunk contest for sticking to that because that's the one I, I feel like that's the one thing we have left in this world that's where you judge stuff on a one to ten scale is diving the only thing I, okay. skateboarding cert, like I can't make sense of any of it they're they're I was watching synchronized diving and they're like that's a that's a 2.4 I'm like what the hell I and then they're like what? that's a 17.33 and you're like yeah. which is good which what is that good yeah. are we are we doing low scores here what's what's, what's going also, on also the thing about synchronized diving i'm obsessed with diving i was on the diving team in seventh and eighth grade and then i grew <laughs> i was awful you have to have like serious gymnastics training and like be able to do a pike and twist your body and like correctly do a flip and my dad and be said, tiny right you, you said yeah you, and i was yeah. very short yeah. Um, but even so I, um, look, my dad described it as he said, I look like a wet piece of spaghetti in the air. So, <laughs> so watching these people, I have some, I know how incredibly difficult what they're doing is, but it, the judges talking about it reminds me of Paul Hollywood on the great British bake off where like some contestant will come in and make him a life-size gingerbread house complete with a three-car garage. And he'll be like, I don't know. It's a little stodgy. Yeah, and yeah. And then these divers do something that, to my eye, looks exactly identical. And the, the commentator is like, ooh, that's going to cost him. And I'm Who's, like, who are we seeing the same thing? Because I feel the, like a crazy person. Yeah, one of the ladies that does the diving commentating, it might be the lady, I feel like she basically always points out the splash, too. 
which like i'm you know i i'm sure she's she, kind of southern i don't know who she yeah, is she's great she's I love awesome, her. But, but at the same time like literally the only thing i don't need help understanding is the splash you know like i don't need someone pointing out that like a big splash is bad and a low splash is good yes um that, that, <laughs> like I, that, that's the last thing i need from you so she, but every time they dive she's like and uh little splash there that's obviously good big splash there that's <laughs> bad and i'm like that's all that, that's all i know i don't need you know I know, and the, she she also points out she'll be like, well, you know, um, there was like a slight slant in the legs, and I'm like, are you sure that's not just the angle that you're watching this at? Good point. Because I don't point. see. I, I don't never know. understand too. Like they'll show the slow mo of the guy's pinky wasn't fully wrapped around his ankle like he was supposed to on that pike, you know? Yeah. You didn't really have it all the way locked in, and they're showing a slow mo, and they're like, yeah, he's gonna get docked a few tents for that. And then they show the score real quick. And my question is, like, do, are the judges seeing that in real time? That's like, what I want to know, too, Mark. And if they're not, how do they, how do they judge so fast? I, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> if they have, like, a slow-mo playing back to them, but I don't think they do. I think they just, like, look for it. Or maybe it's NBC playing tricks on us. My question is, who are these judges? Maybe. Who are these so-called <laughs> judges anyway? Just, is it, like... I don't trust it. Like we have robots that could do this by now. Like it wouldn't that be more like, fair? You look over and it's just like Ernie Johnson and Dominique <laughs> Wilkins, and you're like, wait a second, is this the? Are we at the NBA? Dwayne Wade's holding up a nine. You're like, no, Shaq's hang on. there. <laughs> oh man, um, I want to talk about volleyball a little bit because you brought up commentate. We, we started talking about the commentators, and I don't, yeah. I don't have, I have, uh, I don't know how to say this. I have fallen in love with the guys who are calling the volleyball games. Oh yeah. I don't know their names. I don't want to know their names. I don't know what, I don't want to know what they look like. I want to know as Why little about them, them so as possible much? because they are, I, if they have a podcast, I'm smashing the subscribe button so fast. <laughs> oh my God. They, they are not commentators. They are two dudes watching volleyball that know a lot about volleyball that are just like shooting the <laughs> and don't really realize they're on air. They're not really talking about the game. No, they are, but they're talking about it in like a way that's like the, the, they talk about it in a way that like me and and one of my teammates would watch like an Ohio State basketball game and talk about oh, the cool. basketball game unfolding. I don't know how to just I don't know how to explain. Like they they at one point last night I was watching uh the the men were playing Tunisia I think um mm -hmm. last night and they pull up like the the schedule and Poland versus Venezuela is a game. And one of them's just like, you can just go ahead and cancel that game right now. We don't need to even bother <laughs> with that one. And he just says that on air. And I was like, oh, I wow. love that that's your attitude. That's that, amazing. Like no part of him was like trying to be neutral or whatever. Um, he was going over, they were they were going over the, uh, the contenders of the men's or women's side, something like that. And uh, they, they pull up the table and he just straight up like takes the telestrator and starts crossing off teams. He's like, congratulations <laughs> on making it. You're not a factor. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get Are you here. kidding me? I was dying. He's so they're they're so funny. They they both the the guy who's the lead played volleyball mm -hmm. too. So he's it's not like a the, the play by play guy was like yeah. a great volleyball player I think, um, and so the color guy was obviously volleyball. It's 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 amazing. That's my recommendation, everybody. Watch it and uh, uh, th these guys are unbelievable. And I kind of like I want to know who they are, but like I feel like the more I know, it'll no, be a meet I don't your think you situation. should know anything. You don't want to meet your heroes. I think you yeah. just need to keep enjoying this. What about volleyball? Have you so, loved so much? Here's the uh, first of all, Jordan Thompson. Uh, the the I don't know what position she plays on our volleyball team. She's my favorite Olympian right now. I am, okay. I am obsessed with watching Jordan Thompson <laughs> just hammer the volleyball into China's face, uh -huh. which is what she did like a thousand times the other day when I was watching that game. Uh, that there, there's just something like men's volleyball. I think I, I don't understand how men's volleyball isn't just massively popular in this country mm -hmm. having watched it in the olympics it is absolutely insane i think it's a branding problem i'm from a part of the country where volleyball was uh i don't know i i i, I don't i don't know how to i don't know how to describe it men didn't play volleyball if you told if you told your friends you were playing volleyball on the weekends you'd get your ass kicked like that yeah. was just like how everyone that's the midwestern man's the old school Midwestern man's view on volleyball, right? Yes. Because it felt like an effeminate sport where you 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 wear tight pants and you just kind of that that's you know that that was how volleyball was sold to me when I was growing up, right? I'm watching the men's volleyball in the Olympics. 
this is like I, I feel like I'm watching like Greek gods like battling each other. It just feels it is un these dudes are all like six ten mm -hmm. with like fifty inch verticals and tie like every single time they hit the ball, they are trying to just murder each other with a volleyball. They do the serve, Charlotte. It is the most insane thing I've ever seen. They take the serve and I I remember watching volleyball four years ago, five years ago, whatever, but you forget about it. And then it yeah, comes back around, right. you're like, oh my god. They they start like thirty feet behind the line throw the thing like a mile in the air, like full sprint, jump from behind the line. They're like halfway to the net and just wail that thing. And I, I, somehow the other guys can return it. The, the, the serves average like 75 miles an hour, Charlotte, 75 mile an hour volleyball coming at your face. And you got, I did not know that it was that fast. I've, is, I've, I've watched some volleyball. Like I've tuned in here and there. I haven't been as dedicated as you have, but I did see one TikTok where this girl was watching it and she was like, look how tall these guys are. Now look how high they jump. She was like, nobody talks about this. Insane. And then not, yes. not only how tall they are, how high they jump, how hard they hit. <laughs> <laughs> it is, a, it is like, like the whole sport is just trying to dunk on each other for, you know, two hours, or however long the games take. It's yes. insane. I don't know. I'm watching. Say I'm that like, again. Say that again. The whole, whole volleyball. Volleyball, the entire sport of volleyball is just trying to dunk on each other for two hours. That's all that's it is. The, that's the greatest take I've ever heard about volleyball, that's and I think that it needs to be branded that way as, like, if you love the dunk contest, come watch this. <sighs> not only is it not effeminate or, or uh, you know, like, w w whatever I was told it was growing up, it is, like, the polar... It is might be the most hardcore sport I've ever seen <laughs> that doesn't actually have physical contact, I guess. Hey, women, like, women can be hardcore. No, the 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 women, the U.S. women's team is insane. That's why I said Jordan Thompson. She against China. She had, I think, what what was she? The stat was like, she tried to spike it like twenty three times, and eighteen times she got the point, which is Get like out. mind blowing, mind blowing. Jordan Thompson. If if you have not been watching volleyball, uh, my my read on it is the U.S. women. Um, we're good enough to win gold. We, we're, we're definitely expected to medal. I think we can win gold. We China won gold last time, mm -hmm. and we just beat them in straight sets. So I, I'm feeling good about the U.S. women winning gold. The men need some help. I think it like they could be a Cinderella story. I don't think they're good enough to win gold, but they might. That's like Do they're you like a, think if you yeah. trained, like if you quit sports media and dedicated your life to volleyball, that you could have a chance of making the Olympic team? Absolutely not, because uh, the shortest guys out there are like six five, and I'm six <laughs> four. <laughs> it's Damn. insane. I can't. I can't stress it enough. It's absolutely insane. So I, I wanted to go on a little, uh, a little volleyball. I love, love that fest because Let's I, give I have volleyball. fallen in love. Yeah. Beach volleyball is awesome too, but like the indoor volleyball, it is. I don't know. It's absolutely insane, and I love it. And uh, I, that's my pitch: is is watch some volleyball if you haven't, because if you think it's like like most people, I, it's it's almost like we're too familiar with volleyball. Like we all. We all probably had a volleyball team in high school, and like mm -hmm. you, you feel like you've seen volleyball before, so you're like, I get it. Like I kind of, right. you know, my sister played volleyball. My, you know, I remember my girl. I was dating a girl that was on the volleyball. Like you know, I yeah, I played volleyball in junior high and whatever. So like we all kind of have an idea of what volleyball is in our head. It is not well, that the Olympic level the is not problem, that. Men though. and women, the women are insane too. It's crazy. Here's a problem with the Olympics: is that a lot of them are games that we all played in some form, like on the beach in the summer. Yeah. Like badminton, badminton volleyball, yeah. all of these things that you're like, oh, the, your memory. Ping pong. Yeah. yeah, your memory of what these sports are is not what right. they are, which is why it's sort of, at first you think it's going to be funny to watch these. And then you're like, holy shit, these athletes are yes. doing things. I can, I played a lot of badminton last weekend and that's, that is a hard that is a hard <laughs> sport to play. Let me tell. But I was thinking, like, is there? I don't. I, I think that you watch some of these things, and you're like, oh, is there something that if I quit my job and just dedicated my life to, I could be in the Olympics? Yeah. And I've come to the conclusion that there is nothing physically that I could no. be in them for. But if I trained at archery, I feel like I might have it. If mm -hmm. I took like 15 years to get really good at archery, I think that I might have a shot. I'm stupid enough to think that like diving would be my best chance because it's like just a very quick like Dude, if you just master no, i know i'm too big but i'm saying like <laughs> you want you want to pick a sport that takes like zero time in terms of like you know what I mean? like if you can just master in my mind i'm like all right so basically oh, like the what you're, shorter the event yes, the more times which, you can practice it what what diving basically is is mastering like less than a second of physical movement 
You know what I mean? Like you okay, jump up your because I hear that, that and I'm like, that's the hardest. I'm like, if you put me in a pool for the 1500, well, I might have a shot. No, because the 1500, <laughs> you gotta like have sustained excellence for minutes know, and know. you know, like laps and I'm, laps and laps. I'm talking there's like no way I could do that. Like if they did a five meter sprint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I could come, I could finish third in a five. We haven't sprint. even gotten to track yet. I really, yeah, I'm just nerding out about these uh, Olympics. Like I what, have. What else? What else do you got? Slalom canoe, man. Have you watched? Did I you have, watch any yeah, of that? Yeah. What? Where? Okay. Here are all my questions. When? Where did this come from? How did yeah. they build a man-made course? Two, three. I mean, what are the slalom canoers doing? when they're not slalom canoeing like do they have mm. to have day jobs i haven't they might seen have any families like... they might they might i don't know but are they on like the slalom canoe circuit are they going to rep like rapids are they doing this in... i know that there are people who do this for fun are they... like i i need to learn i need to read everything i can about slalom canoe but also it looks like the most miserable sport I, first of all, I hate canoeing. I'm very bad at it. I find it very frustrating. You have to switch paddles. I don't even yeah. like kayaking, but at least those have a paddle on either side. Yeah. Canoeing, these people are in these tiny little boats. You can only use your upper body, and you have to go uphill against rapids to go around a slalom yeah. course, and it just looks like it stressed me out watching it, and it also made me feel kind of high because I was like, this is... This is a completely wild experience that I have never seen before. They look constantly frustrated. Like I'm cause frustrated part watching of the, them. Part of the sport is basically like you overshoot the one. You, you have to overshoot or you, you go through one, but by going through the one, you're kind of overshooting the other one. So now you got to yes. like go back to the other one. And it seems like they, they're just, it seems like if I was a canoeer, I'd just be cursing the guy who built the course the entire time. Does it time. stress you out? It's like, why would you put this back here, you idiot? The water <laughs> flowing that, God damn it. Oh, and some of them look so calm. Some yeah. of them are, some of them do it with this just like, or their face almost hits the pole and they show you the slow motion. I, also, the poles are hanging. They're not yeah, even the like, are, you can't even the guys, tell where like, they start, are. They start like <laughs> kind of, you know, bobbing their head around them. They try to cheat it, uh, yeah. but it's not cheating because it's part of the sport. So just yeah. kind of like wrap your head around. Um, I don't I don't like the man-made course. Can I say that? I, I, don't, I don't dislike the idea of a man-made course. What I don't like is that they just put like big blue barriers up to create I the agree. rapids. I would like at least like decorate those to make them look like rocks or make logs them look or like fake right? rock. They make it look like something. It just like, looks like you're it looks like it looks like the uh, city street is flooded and there's just a guy like going through the street. I was going to say it looks like the mall broke <laughs> and the mall is flooded and people are at the canoe store trying to get out. Um, Along along the same lines of uh, of canoe slalom looking frustrating i i wrote this down and we don't really need to expand on it because I, I think i said it earlier that a uh, water water polo looks like the the most physically taxing sport and it sucks how boring i find watching it because i i respect how hard it Same. is to play but i'm like i tried to watch last night our u.s women were playing hungary and we ended up losing the game i, I just kept dozing off and i felt so bad because it was a close game it was like really good we ended up losing by one we had a shot to tie it at the end and i was like I don't know. <laughs> it really feels like it feels yeah. like football in molasses. And then meanwhile, you see the 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 underwater cam, and these girls are like dunking, like trying to murder each other, like trying to drown each other. It's for... the most. I would argue that water polo is actually the most hardcore yeah. sport because you're basically trying to drown each other while trying to score a goal. Yeah. But I also, it's the kind of sport that if I turn it on and water polo's on, I'm like, ugh, I can't wait for like the diving yeah. that they're about to cut to, and I feel yeah. bad about that. I but... feel very bad. I wish I, I wish it was a better entertaining or a more entertaining sport. That and table tennis was the other one I wrote down that I got. So every time table tennis shows up on my guide, I cannot wait to click on it because I'm like, this is gonna be sick, dude. Like I, I've, I've seen Forrest Gump, you know. <laughs> This is going to be awesome. I had and a basement I, once. <laughs> and I click on it, and then I'm like, this isn't a great spectator sport. I did. I, there's something about it. It's just like not – it's exciting. I appreciate how – but they don't – I don't know. There's just something about it. It's I was like, it's too, too close. fast. It's, it's too fast and too small that it's just yeah, like – Yeah, I can't see – my little yeah. brain can't keep track of the yeah. ping pong – or, sorry, the ball. Um, yeah. I have a take about your volleyball take is that I feel the same way about swimming. I'm obsessed I, – I think oh, I've watched okay. every single – Swimming race. Interesting. I am, I am absolutely hooked. And my my question with the Olympics is like, why don't we broadcast all of this stuff more? Like, if there were a channel that regular that like on Saturdays broadcast as a big marquee event a swimming yeah. meet, 
And maybe there is, and I just don't know about it, but I don't see it enter I like the collective idea. sports consciousness. I, I would watch idea. every single race. I think we have we have to have like Olympic teams where uh, they're not countries; they're just like club teams. Yes. And you can draft, um, but but we we package them all together, and we have like a mini Olympics, a club Olympics, where it's like I I don't know uh, the 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 Indianapolis team can draft yeah. like us. They get a swimmer, you get a, <gasps> a track and field guy, you get the, whatever, and we picked a few events. It's like the decathlon basically, but you get like one guy for each event or one I love girl, this. and you split, it, and then like. That's the team, and then you can make trades, and you can be like, "We gotta upgrade our swimming. Our swimming is atrocious. We need better." I would swimmers. probably and... be the most diehard Club Olympics fan in the world. Yeah. I would watch. I would watch that every weekend, and it would be like one bars routine, one track meet, one. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I, and they would sort of parse it out. Like I live for watching this stuff, and then they take it away from me, and I have to wait four years, and yeah, in this case, shouldn't... five. It shouldn't be a four year like we don't want it to be every weekend that we're doing no. this, but like maybe once a month, once every couple months, there's the big meet and we or yeah, just we do, do it, it once a year. Um, once they a have year all would be these awesome. stupid places built already. But just like I, bring people I, back to them. I love the idea of it not be of, of having clubs where it's not countries where yeah. like you you pit Americans against each other now and you have to now play against each other in shot put or whatever. I like that. I don't know. Um, I like because it, it, it the nationalism to me is a little bizarre when they're like it's just such an honor to wear Great Britain on my hat and I'm like, no, it's not. Is it's it? It's Great Britain. It's, you guys suck. <laughs> also, one more take, one more hot take. Uh, it is driving me absolutely insane that they are calling these Tokyo 2020 because it is 2021, mm. and mm. I don't know why. I hate it. Does that bother you? Well, they did the same with the Euro tournament soccer. It was Euro. Yeah, I hate it. I'm like, but it's not. I, it's 2021. You can't yeah. redo a year. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't bother you. I I, I understand why it bothers you. I just uh, I don't know. Well, it's just factually well, I, incorrect. I understand. I understand. <laughs> but I think for posterity, these are still the 20. The, they they would argue 2020 was never the year. It was the brand. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It was the Tokyo 2020 brand. You can't just like the Big Ten has 14 teams now. You're not changing the Big Ten name. The Big Ten is the brand. It's it yeah. is what it is. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought up swimming. Maybe this could be the last yes. uh, straight thought before we uh, move on to the yeah. our, our final stuff here. I I actually want to push back on swimming a little bit because I find myself this year. I'm kind of out on swimming and Why? I don't know how much it has to do with America underachieving a little bit, mm. or I just think there's too many swimming events, Charlotte. You're watching. See, them I all. don't think they're enough. Yeah. I'd see that. That's, I don't know that's what it is. Maybe it's because I love to swim. I actually just joined a pool because I've been oh, watching so much <laughs> swimming. <laughs> I love swimming. Like swimming. I think that how I could you, have been good at swimming. What do you mean you joined a pool? You just like jumped in or no, I found a like gym a, with a pool. Oh, a gym with a pool. Okay. Well, I, I haven't I joined you. it yet, but I'm emailing with them. The way you <laughs> said, <laughs> I need three references. If anyone, yeah. yeah, it's also very expensive. So I don't um, know. <laughs> I, I think uh, swimming, I, it dawned on me that uh, there are just too many events. I was trying to make sense of them all, and I couldn't. Like, l like Katie Ledecky loses, and everyone's like, oh, my God, she lost. And then she also won. Everyone's like, so the timeline is very confusing because people are like, man, that's that's a huge upset. Katie Ledecky lost. And then at the same time, other the same people are like, Katie Ledecky is the GOAT. She <laughs> killed everybody. And I'm like, how did she do both? And, again, I think it's just like I'm getting old, and it's hard to track everything. Listen. Um, it's also whether you grew up around the terminology. Like when I was on the diving yeah. team, we practiced at the same time as the swim team and our meets were with the swim team. So I know what these, I so you. I know that the 200 is more of a sprint for Katie, whereas the 1500 where they literally have to hold a number down in the water so you can see what, what lap you're on what because you're there on. are yeah. so many is the equivalent of, uh, you know, a long distance race where they swim a mile. It feels like, it feels like they just like keep making up events in swimming because you can never run out of ideas. And when you have four different strokes, That's is true. it? And, and and it's like let's do the one hundred freestyle, the two hundred freestyle, the three hundred freestyle, the four hundred free, the five hundred, the five hundred and fifty. Here's the five hundred relay. Here's the five hundred and seventy four relay. Here's the six hundred backstroke. Here's the six hundred medley. Here's the six hundred relay medley. Here's the and I'm like my God, which one matters the most? That's why You're like I need, we should have one event that like is worth seven medals. You know, like this yeah. is the one that matters. This is the most important one. <laughs> or, or the, I think you should get 
I. <sighs> That's what's confusing to me, and okay. it's that it's between that and the other part is that if you if every single swim race breaks a world record, do world records actually exist? Is my question, because. I learned, I just found out during these Olympics, yeah. Michael Phelps, here, here's a question for you. How many individual world records does Michael Phelps currently hold in one. 2021? One. Michael Phelps has one world record? What is it's happening to this sport? It's because people keep getting bigger. I don't know no, why. I have a theory. The no, water. no, no, hear they're, me out. They're dope in hear the water. The water's hear me doped. Out. No, <laughs> I think Americans keep, well, I think everybody keeps getting taller. Are you taller <laughs> than your parents? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I, I think I'm like the exact same height as my dad, but yeah, sure. Okay, well, I'm taller than my mom. Okay. And I think all of these swimmers... Are just getting taller, and I that's think it? people are getting bigger. I, I don't like it. I, like it, <laughs> Michael Phelps retired from swimming last month, I think, and he's already lost every world record. How is that possible? Like, I don't you, know. You, I don't we know. Need more world, we need world records in swimming that have like been around for 41 years, and no one can break them, and... We finally have a guy who's come along that he might be able to break the records to tune in everybody. But like every time you're watching a race, they got the world record line. They might as well not even put it up. It's like, I, I, I don't know. It's like I'm playing Mario Kart where I got the little ghost guy yeah, like, yeah, yeah. from where I, you know, like. See, I will push back because I love that. I, I feel like it makes me feel special because they show the world record line. And I'm like, oh, am I going to be witnessing history? Are they going to do it? Like, I but get. Then you gotta, yeah, but then you got to watch the race tomorrow because they're going to break it again tomorrow. Yeah, and, I get yeah, excited I guess, again tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like a I'm like a goldfish, Mark. My attention span is oh, short. Man. Um. Oh, my last thought, and then we, we, we can move on, is uh, yeah. I, I wrote down that fencing looks like two DJs that were booked for the same club <laughs> fighting each other for the right to get up there. They got like these, these, these hel they got like the dead mouse looking helmets with lights on them. Yes, and then, I wrote and, down that they look like the coolest uh, beekeepers ever, so oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe the middle, they're probably. DJ beekeep. Uh, uh, one wanna... more thing, one more what? thing. There's one Australian dude in the swimming stands who loses his mind. He looks like Heath Ledger, RIP. And oh, he is he loses, the coach? I don't know. I think so, but he loses his mind every time that woman, Ariane Titmus, does well. Yeah. And yeah. they keep cutting to him, and he is he is my new... He is one of my favorite things about this Olympics. I, I and I don't it. want to know anything about him, because I don't... He he could be bad, it's, and I just want to... I want to let him be great in the stands. It's Matthew Della Vadova. He's just... <laughs> he's there in between basketball games, just... <laughs> geeking out for the australian swimming team um what, what else do we want to do here do you do you want to do do you want to get to our list or do you want to do you want to do sports that should be in the olympics do you have that oh man no i only have three sports that should be in the uh, olympics we'll go through those quickly we were right, going to do cornhole? that but we're, we're we're running long so let's just uh yeah let's go just let's quickly. let's just i think cornhole should be in the olympics okay i think darts should be in the olympics I and i think spike ball should be in the olympics you're a spike ball fan no i, I don't it. like it but i think it requires a lot of effort okay I'm I respect you. it. I don't like playing it. Spike ball is, I missed the boat on that. That feels like, uh, I, I see people playing on the beach all the time. And that just, I think that's just going to be a thing where I'm just like, no, nah, I'm good. Anytime I've tried it once and it looks no, like no, it would I'm hurt good. my back. Yeah. I'm good on that one. Yeah. It seems same. fun. It seems like you guys are having fun, but I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm just going to drink. I'm going to sit this one out. I also <laughs> hate games. I'm going to be honest. Oh, really? <laughs> so anyway, um, <laughs> what uh, do you think? I, you I, I wrote down, uh, sports that I want to see in the Olympics. Uh, Number one, esports. I think we're headed towards that, honestly. Like, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if there's, like, drone flying or, like, Call of Duty is, is an Olympic sport. Listen, we're getting close. <laughs> we're getting close. We're getting very close. Number two, uh, dodgeball definitely belongs <laughs> yes. in the Olympics. Yes. Like, that is that is an instant hit. Everybody yes. is watching that immediately if dodgeball is in the Olympics. And the and United States would take gold, obviously, and... That would be there would be immense national pride if the United States dodgeball team took gold. So I don't understand why that's not a thing. Uh, bowling, I can't believe is not an Olympic event. Um, oh. I I, I want to see bowling in the Olympics. And then the other two I had written down were uh, football, gridiron football. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you and, imagine? No, Can you and imagine? I I don't. We don't need to expand on that. That's funny in and of itself. That's Can you just, imagine? It's. <laughs> Yeah. United States takes on, I don't Canada. know. Canada? Canada, yeah. Just, I mean, that, that's basically it. Those are the only two teams that, that, that it. exist. And it's the like U.S. Un would be guaranteed a gold every United year. United States versus Peru in, in, in football. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it, 
wouldn't be safe. Like they physically, they would get sued. It would be like such a dangerous. We went four thousand to nothing. <laughs> uh, and then the last one I had written down is skydive chicken, uh, where you jump out of an airplane and the last person to pull the parachute wins. And we just Are have the a big only tournament. two people who compete: Travis Pastrana <laughs> and David, David Blaine. D yes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So. <laughs> Um, all right, let's get to our list. Okay. Uh, what is uh, what are our lists today? We're doing just favorite Olympic moments, yeah. right? That's it. Because, very simple, you know, very straightforward. As we mentioned, everyone's saying like Team USA basketball sucks. Like Simone's not competing. Like all this, uh, Katie Ledecky lost. Softball it. didn't win gold. Softball didn't win gold. Uh, and the it, soccer, it, the girls' soccer team, the women's yes, soccer women's team soccer. loses. They they sucked out of the gate. Uh, yeah, there's so a lot of bad vibes. We with, figured. With the Olympics that we would just look back on good vibes good um, vibes. because that's really all we feel like doing right now yeah. um okay so let's get into it you okay. go first uh all right. your top five olympic for for uh uh clarity here this is winter or summer olympics yep um and the other thing i want to say is my list is moments that i was watching live so I'm not saying these are the, the, you don't have to follow that rule. I don't care. But th these are, these are not the five biggest events in Olympic history from or moments in Olympic history for me. These were the ones that not only was I alive for, I vividly remember watching on television in the moment or yes. maybe not. Maybe it was filmed like 16 hours earlier and I was just too stupid to realize it. <laughs> this is also how I did my list. Okay, I, these perfect. were, these are our personal, the moments that spoke to us. These aren't yes. like historical so number yes. five for me is Michael Phelps' stare down of Chad Leclo. Okay. Do you Remind remember me that? of this one. No. So he, Michael Phelps and Chad Leclo had raced in London in 2012. And they were sort of friendly, but I think Chad beat Phelps. And then Chad said something um, trash talking Phelps about how like, oh, well, you know, Phelps can no longer say that he's the best because I won this race. And they're before a race in the 2016 Olympics. Michael Phelps is sitting there with his headphones and his hood on, giving the most That's incredible right. death stare to this Brazilian guy That's who's right. dancing in front of him. And I saw that in real time and knew as I was watching, this is about to be one of the greatest Olympic memes of all time. And it brought me immense joy. Is he, he's, he's South African, but yeah, I, I pulled up the South picture. African, sorry. Yeah, South African, it's Same okay. colored I, flag he, or he's, uniform. He's got the, he's got... Uh, green and, and and blue, but uh, or green and yellow. Yeah. Um, I pulled up the picture. I remember this now. Isn't this that is a incredible? great meme. Great, great moment. Great, great meme. And then he he wins, right? He wins the race. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't Amazing. Phelps win? I think Phelps won. I just feel I'm like this sure. is. Yeah. There are not many, like, there have been a few good memes out of the Olympics, but this one was just like straight up hilarious, yeah. and I yeah. loved it. That's perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Great Thank way you. to get it started. Thank you. Uh, number five for me, spoiler alert, this is the only one on my list does not involve America winning. So, uh, <laughs> But this is so legendary that I had to I had to put it on the list. Also, I feel like this guy's an honorary American because uh, that's kind of what happens in this country is we j are just bandwagon people. So, like, if someone's, like, you know, Roger Federer feels like he He's could be American, American because it's, sure. like, <laughs> it's like, oh, he wins a lot. He's ours. <laughs> Um, number five for me is the 100 meter dash final when Usain Bolt uh, was, was mm. so cocky. I don't even think it was cocky. He, he puts his hand, he coasts across the finish line. Uh, I remember watching this live and I was so blown away because like halfway through the race, he's kind of tied. I think it was just, was it Justin Gatlin or Tyson Gay he was going to? I don't remember, but there I was like Gatlin. someone, it was a Gatlin. There was, there's, there's an American that was. Uh, one of those two was uh, was our, our best chance at beating him. And we were neck and neck with him. And then all of a sudden, he just pulls out ahead. And he, he knows he's going to win. And he puts his arms down, starts looking to his left and right, and just starts coasting across the finish line, Charlotte. And I thought, that is the most baller thing I've ever seen. Uh, Usain Bolt was like... Like, the other thing about him in all those those 100-meter finals races that they do the, the the camera move where they go through each guy and they're like pointing the camera up at his face and every single guy is like i, I went back and rewatched it like every single guy is like pacing left and right and like kind of fidgety and like he's the, the adrenaline's pumping usain bolt looks like he's just got back from the beach and he's just like chilling he's like what's up guys hey yeah i'm about to win this and i i just remember watching that was like my introduction to usain bolt and i was like this guy is special and this is insane i've never seen anything like this so that's number five i almost put that on my list also um because it was one of those moments where it's so fun to watch somebody 
know that they're good at something and yeah. be right. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was very simple. It was just like pure joy. I love that choice. Um, my number four is from 2016 when Katie Ledecky was like a bajillion feet ahead of everybody in the pool oh, in the yeah. 400 free. Yeah. yeah. And it, it was this picture where you have all the swimmers and then and then Katie and 400 it's not a short race but it's also not like she was doing a mile where that would be standard it was just like yeah this person is so clearly and I remember watching that I think I was like jumping up and down on my couch I was like so fired it, again it's swimming I am weirdly a swimming nerd apparently I loved so much that visual of the distance between the pack and then her and and it's she's already destroying everybody and you're still cheering for her to destroy yes. them even more. Yeah. It's like it's, it's like there's no mercy rule. You're just like murder them. You're like do it, Katie. You, you you you're playing a video game and you turn the settings on all the way easy just to see how yes. much you can win by. That's kind of what it looked like. And, and, <sighs> and then you win by like a thousand. You're like, hmm, I wonder if I can win by a thousand and one. Let me try that again. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it felt restart. exactly like yeah, that. That's and what... it was so it was so satisfying to watch someone else just crush people, especially because awesome. I think Katie Ledecky is lovely. She she is you know? exactly that. Uh, number four on my list is uh, Vince Carter dunking over the French dude named <laughs> uh, Frederick Weiss. Frederick Weiss. Yeah. Uh, I, I know the guy's name. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I know, I think it's Weiss. Why is Weiss? That would be French, not Vice. I think it's Vice. It's W E I S. Yeah, but, but um, point is, the only reason I know this guy's name is because Vince Carter dunked all over his face. He jumped over him. Uh, there's really nothing else to be needs to be said. I think everyone knows the clip. 2000 uh, Sydney Olympics. Yep. United States win gold. We beat France in the gold medal game. And in my mind, I like to, con to just put both memories together and pretend that Vince Carter dunking over this guy won us the gold medal that's not the case this happened in the this happened in pool play i think it wasn't even in the gold medal game but uh we did beat france in the gold medal game so i'm like you know just pull it all together that gave us the gold medal um i, I went back it. and i went back and rewatched that too by the way and the commentators doug collins was the color guy mm -hmm. i don't know who's doing play by play they no sold it so bad. They were just like, "Wow, what a dunk by Vince Carter!" That's pretty. And then they show the replay, and Doug Collins is like, "Did he jump over him?" Oh, you know, but live they didn't see what happened. And uh, I feel like uh, you, I feel like we should pay some announcers to like redub that somehow. Like get Mike Breen to do a call. I love for that. it. And then we can re, you know, that'd be like I, a quadruple bang. We should we should do a thing where we just do like call it gaslighting in sports or something where we have Mike Breen or like Joe Buck or somebody do a call of a of a play that they, yeah. they they didn't originally call we just think that they could do it better and then like, i love it and then we put that clip on the internet we're like vince carter dunked over Vi over frederick weiss for the gold medal and mike breen on the call here you go enjoy <laughs> those would go viral those would yeah. make us have a lot of followers we yeah. should seriously there do that go. we'll call our best friend joe buck who would love to come on our podcast Absolutely. um you know the funniest part about that is that Later that year, I think, or a little shortly after, the Knicks drafted Frederick Weiss. Oh, really? <laughs> they they took him. He was that then on like the, which move. is like the most Knicks thing of all time. That's a Knicks move, um, yeah. Okay, number three for me is Lindsey Vonn's gold medal in 2010 when she beat Julia Mancuso, who was also an American, and she came back from injury and... I was much like I'm obsessed with swimming now. I was obsessed with skiing then. And I told people that I was a ski racer, even though I only entered one race once. Uh, and it was against myself because it was like a novelty race at a ski resort. But yeah. I still wanted so badly the cool factor of being someone who was like really good at skiing. So there was a period of time in my life where I knew everything about all of the skiers. Wow. and. I think I fooled some people because I ran into someone from high school who was a few years younger than I was a few years ago. And she was like, oh, this is the only time anyone's ever said this to me. And I was like, I don't know what, I don't know how I fooled you. But she was like, oh my God, I thought you were so cool in high school. I even got a subscription to Ski Magazine so that I'd have something to talk to you about. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, what did I do? I was like oh, trying no. to be like a cool ski kid in Boston, Massachusetts. Like you've, you've led the youths astray I, yeah, and the people are looking up to you and following your example. Oh, and like God, reading, like funny. buying subscriptions to schema. Anyway, I love Lindsey Vaughn and I loved, um, I was very into this rivalry between the two of them. And I think I might've kind of wanted Julia 
to win, but then I was just like, oh, sick. Lindsay got it. I'm on board. I always got Lindsay Vaughn in the, is it Lindsay Jacob Ellis? She was yes. a snowboarder? Yes. Not a skier? I always got them she confused, was a snowboarder. I don't know why. Probably because their names the are Lindsay. The same name? <laughs> that might be it. Did you consider that? But L L Jacob Ellis was the one that uh, showboated, right? Like, had the gold medal wrapped up, and then on the final jump, like, yes. pimped, pimped it a little bit, and then crashed oh, and I lost it. That. Was that, that was her. That. that wasn't Lindsay Vaughn. No, no, no. That was uh, that was Jacob, Jacob Ellis, Ellis, and she had curly yeah. blonde hair. Yeah, that's she, yeah. Okay, all right. That so that has nothing to do with no. Lindsay Vaughn winning gold. All right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's my contribution. <laughs> What's your number three? Uh, number three is one a moment that you said is not impressive. That you said you do not like. You said, "Why are we glorifying this?" And I said, "Because it is the most maybe the most iconic summer Olympics moment oh. in the history of the United States." Yeah. Carrie Strug sticking the second vault on a bum ankle. I it, listen. I understand that it's a hot button topic now because now, just mentioning Carrie Strug's name, you're invoking the Simone Biles situation. Um, sort I, of. I, I I am not doing that. What I am yes. doing is I am saying, leave Simone Biles out of this. In 1996, when the the what were they called the the Magnificent Seven? My mm -hmm. favorite my my favorite Olympic team of all time. I forget what they were called, but I remember Dominic Dawes. I remember Dominic Mucciano. I remember Shannon Miller. Mm -hmm. um, that whole crew was amazing. Uh, and it was happening in Atlanta, and I was watching every second of it, and Kerry Strug sticks the vault, and what else needs to be said? I guess we, we've since re learned. I guess they knew it back at then, but uh, she didn't need the vault, I guess, and then we still would have won gold. See which I think, Maybe, again, Gaslight Sports, erase that from the internet. Don't tell anybody that. Get no, that don't tell anyone that. Because as I was saying that about Carrie Struggs, it's not, I, I don't, I didn't say that to take away. I still think what she did was absolutely incredible. Yeah. I was just like, I don't, I didn't remember it being quite so hard to watch where I was like, oh. It's the, it's also the context of the, of Larry Nasser and the Carolis right. and just like right. the, the, the situation of uh, the, the 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 what what u.s gymnastics has has been revealed been to be revealed to, but yeah, in that that's, moment there's all that that was that that moment in and of itself and like no one should ever take away what she did to do that like that right. was an unbelievable right. performance exactly and it exactly. can exist as that too i'm 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 glorifying the moment in time when yes. this woman with two torn ligaments in her ankle went out there and stuck it for for her her and her team and her country and i don't know whatever else. but it was just like the coolest thing i've ever seen so yes that's yes but uh but not the coolest thing because it's number three on my list so, <laughs> <laughs> so i guess the third coolest thing i've ever seen <laughs> um okay my number two is also a gymnastics one and it's the first time i saw simone biles do her floor routine um because it was when they did they showed all it was no one had ever seen it before and no one had ever done it before and they showed her like the trajectory did she do a stick -a <laughs> she did a, she it did a, was like a, a tri triple, triple do stick -a -roo. Flip -do <laughs> and then a stick -a and i remember seeing like when somehow you watch it and you're like oh that's really impressive and very cool but then when they sort of detailed what exactly she was doing because it was happening too quickly for me to actually yeah. make sense of it and then they showed it it's like she should have stopped going up at a certain time but then she just kept Going, going up and spinning around and it absolutely blew my mind i will never forget like that first that graphic that they ran with it where i was like oh damn i guess like if you're confused as to how simone biles can be in the situation she's in now where she says that she gets lost in the air and doesn't remember where she's twisting and all that just go watch that yeah. <laughs> go watch that first one and be like that's how because even when you slow it down you're like how the hell does anybody how do you know when you're supposed to turn this way and then turn back and flip and I'm like, are how are you ever are not lost and... in the air? They how do a great you job. Ever found? They really, yeah, how are you <laughs> ever found? They really do a great job of, of, uh, just making it look like they just decided in that moment to just like kind of flip around and see what happens. They make you it know? look so it just, easy. Yeah. And I've been watching it as a old person who's like back hurts from sleeping. And I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, yeah. I don't get it. Like, Suni Lee did her bar routine and just kept flipping around at one point. And I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm completely confused, <laughs> but I will watch the shit out of this. 
<laughs> oh man. Uh, number two on my list is a, uh, a a a moment that I will never forget. Uh, in 2008, the four by 100 meter freestyle relay with between France and the United States, when Jason Lezak in the final leg uh, oh. <laughs> puts up the the fastest four by one split of all time, 46.06, I want to say. Okay. Um, I, I didn't even write that down. I think that's Damn. my memory. Yeah, I could see you pull that out of your head. 46.06, I think is the old. Uh, my understanding is that those are the two, to this day, though, those are the two fastest four by 100 meter f- relays ever accomplished in swimming. They both happened at the exact same time. And the context, Charlotte, as a reminder, mm-hmm. the French dude, who I'm not even going to say his name because he does not deserve my respect to even say his name. So he's just going to be the French dude uh, who, who was the anchor for the French team. He says going in the American, he says, quote, the Americans were going to smash him. That's what we came here for. Michael Phelps needed this win to break Mark Spitz record for most gold medals in a single uh, Olympics. So there was that on the line as well. There was the French talking all that junk. Uh, Jason Lezak goes up against the French dude in the final leg who the French dude was like the world record holder for the, mm-hmm. the 100 meter freestyle. And, and Lezak is behind to start. And he's like, and, and the lead starts getting bigger and bigger. Oh. And then he comes back and he wins it and sticks and he it to chases him. Chases him down. Chases him down. I was watching that live. I was freaking out. I don't think I've yelled at my TV any more louder than I did in that moment. Dude, I was just a like, swimming go, chase down. Go. I'm telling you, it oh looks like God. it shouldn't be possible. Oh and my then God. they catch him. And they catch it. I, I will remember that moment. I, I, I literally remember exactly where I was when I was watching that. I will remember that moment for the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> it was absolutely insane and and the context of the guy talking junk like it would have been crazy without that but then the guy talking all that junk and then that's the guy that loses it so i good. mean it, you so, can't and write the that. french i mean come on was that phelps's eighth medal no that wasn't his eighth but that was he had to have it to to break you know what oh I mean? right, like right, they, right he needed like he it in the, yeah if he doesn't get it we know he's not gonna get eight okay so okay. yeah yeah um that's that's number two for me that's so great i'd forgotten that moment and now i remember it oh see the olympics they just like i'm like oh yeah i love that and that's how i feel about this first one which was the 1996 women's soccer team beating china to win gold in atlanta it was the first time women's soccer was in the olympics i was Mm -hmm. obsessed with these women like Mm -hmm. they were a lot of them were on the 99 world cup team Mm -hmm. and it was mia ham it was Mm -hmm. michelle akers brianna scurry i think was playing then too unless that was 04 but everybody that I loved as a little kid who played soccer and my favorite moment was after they won they all were lining up to like have the medal ceremony and step onto the podium but no one knew if they were supposed to or not because none of them had ever been in the olympics before and they didn't know how soccer worked in the olympics (laughs) and so like a few of them stepped up and then the rest of them were like okay I guess we'll also step up and it was (sighs) And Mia Hamm looks like she's four years old, and I'm. Everybody knows I love Mia Hamm, so that's my, that's my number one moment. That that is a great. Uh, that's a great one. That's a good. It was that, fun. Th- that that team is legendary. The, yep. That team and the. Uh, that, I I think the ninety ninety six is what solidified my love for uh, the the women's gymnastics team and the women's uh, soccer team. And yeah. I just follow them all the time. That's like the one. I don't know. I I I. It was I a good year for for ladies will, on teams <laughs> i will i i I'm, I'm gonna shoot you straight this is a great am i sexist segment here oh, God. um i i uh, i will watch a lot of women's sports i i i like women's sports just fine um but the gymnastics and the, the women's soccer are the two that like i genuinely love i like go nuts for like i i, I genuinely go that... nuts for whereas like the you know like women's basketball I'll watch it but i'm like I, I, this isn't, I don't like it as much as the NBA. I don't like it as much as college basketball, but I, it's, it's, it, they're good. I respect how good they are and I'll watch it. But like women's soccer, I'm like, yes, let's go. <laughs> Big match tonight, lady, you know. And I think it all started from 96. I think like watching the Olympics team in 96 and then watching the, the soccer, the, the gymnastics and then watching the soccer team, I got so into it. I I, love I, it. That's a great pick. I don't think that makes you sexist. I think it just makes you honest. Yeah, like you're allowed to like, what you yeah. like <laughs> yeah yeah i'll put i'll put on all the other stuff and i'll watch it yeah. and i'll cheer them on but like those are the two that like i get i honestly i care more about the women's gymnastics team than the men's i, I the soccer it, 
I don't know, but and who cares? That that's okay. not the point of this exercise. Right, right, right. But I just want to say that, like, I I genuinely get very excited, and I think uh I think you just helped me understand why. I think it's ninety six Olympics was this. I was think the, the I'd never put that together before. Yeah. That that, that was a crowning moment. Yeah. For so. women's sport. Uh, finally, my number one, um, I'll wrap this thing up was, uh, what I believe to be one of the greatest, re- you know, not one of take that. I'm going to take I'm gonna walk the back. The single greatest redemption story in the history of sports. Uh, it is about a man who was mocked relentlessly. It was about a man whose name had become a punchline, uh, on the internet. Certainly. Um, I, it, it, th- there was no coming back for this man because he, his name had been drugged through the mud so badly, Charlotte, for how bad he was at the sport he participated in. Mm-hmm. And then in the 2018 winter Olympics mm-hmm. end eight against Sweden with the gold medal on the line, John Schuster yes. <laughs> with a double takeout <laughs> for five points for the United States to secure the gold medal. Uh, it, it is, it, it, I, I could not believe that that match. I went back and looked up when it started. Cause my, I remember it being like super late slash early. I, I watched it live. I went back and looked it up. The match started at 3 a.m. Eastern <laughs> and I set my alarm for 3 a.m. Eastern to watch it. Cause I was so excited. <laughs> I swear to God, curling is the only winter Olympic sport that I genuinely care about. It's the only one I will watch all the winter Olympics. It's just kind of like on in the background curling. I will watch every second of every curling match. I don't even do it. Ironically, I genuinely <laughs> love curling so much. Oh my God. And uh, I watched John Schuster and the boys choke time and time again. And in 2018, they put it all together. They go on this gold medal run. It was insane. I could not believe it. And then I ended up g- actually meeting those dudes. They came to Columbus to a, a curling event in Columbus. I think you I told me this before and I got extremely jealous. I was so starstruck and they're all like just normal dudes, obviously. Cause like, how could you have a massive ego if you're like into curling? You know, it's not like yeah. they're, it's not like they're multi multi millionaires. They're just like, right. yeah, you know, we're curlers that got hot <laughs> one week in the Olympics. Um, but they're all great dudes. They were so cool. Uh, Tyler George, Matt Hamilton, John Landsteiner, I think is the other Matt Hamilton was the one with the mustache. Uh, anyway, you know, I, I, I love that curling team so much. They they were awesome, and and that that moment was so cool. So I'm glad I almost put them on my list at number four, and it didn't feel right. But I also couldn't put them in number one. So I'm really glad that you put them at number. one. I'm not one. joking. I I, I watched I watched that gold medal match, and I stayed up. I, I, it, that that's what made it so insane. I think is that I invested a lot. It, that, that's <laughs> yeah. what made that moment great. Was like. I woke up, I was like giving it my all for the boys and then yes. they gave their all back to me they and did. we won gold. And that was you great. You know, I'm realizing now that in 2018, I did a thing where I went to the mm-hmm. Olympics press day before they went overseas in Park City. And I'm realizing that I met all of those curlers yeah. and I completely forgot until right now because I have a memory of Matt Hamilton being like, yeah, man, I mean, you just join a curling club in Wisconsin yeah, and yes. you can make it to the Olympics. And yes, I was like, yes damn, maybe I should join. Maybe I should move to Madison. They're the coolest dude. Like, I honestly think we could get them on the show next week Let's. if you want to. They're, they're very accessible. Let's. They're just normal dudes, and they're just, yeah. Oh, my God. I would love awesome. to have the curling guys on the podcast next week. It'll still would, be Olympics. I would love John Schuster to just work for NBC and not even do curling, do, like, beach volleyball <laughs> analysis. He's like, as an Olympian, um, I think what they're they're a little tight. I think that's yes. what's going on out there is they're a little, they got to loosen up. And He's commentating swimming. Yeah. Like he's something an not even. Yeah. <laughs> Olympic legend John Schuster here to break down the <laughs> Kato Ledecky's 1,500-meter swim. John, how impressive was that? He's like, you know, it reminds me of my gold medal win <laughs> against Sweden in 2018. He just relates everything back to his gold medal win. He's like, well, you know, Rowdy, when I won when my I, gold medal. As a gold uh, medalist myself, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh boy, that was a longer episode, but I think uh, I think we it was. It. But I think, I think we, we needed it, and I loved going over those moments at the end because I had yeah. forgotten about some of yours. Yeah, that was fun. The Olympics are going on, and the track hasn't even started, Charlotte. Dude, my that's buddy, why we're gonna we're gonna have to do another Olympics. My same episode. buddy, my same friend who uh, I said buys all the cheap stuff and <laughs> says, swears it's just as, as good as uh, he 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 was a big he was a thrower in college. He would, he threw hammer. Um, so he's, oh, he's damn. very plugged into the, uh, the throwing scene, the discus, the shot, oh, put, yeah. the javelin, whatever. And he said, uh, he said, America is letting us down so far in the Olympics, which is not even true, but it's just like, you know, some of the, as we went over, like some of the right, right, teams right. are a little disappointed, whatever. He's like, just wait for shot put because 
Ryan Krauser and Joe Kovacs are, they both won gold and silver in shot put in 2016. Okay. Ryan Krauser, my intel is telling me, which like, I'm saying this like I have sources as though yeah. this isn't like <laughs> very well documented. Ryan Krauser, who won gold in 2016, Charlotte, broke the world record in the Olympic trials leading up to these Olympics for shot put and not just broke it absolutely smashed it like he almost threw the shot put out of the range of the little you know like they have the little dirt yeah. to like yeah land it here he almost overthrew the whole damn thing uh and my buddy says that krauser is known as a big meat guy and he's going to shatter his own world record it was a world record that had stood for 31 years he broke it in the olympic I remember trials that. He breaks in Olympic trials. He says, my buddy says, he's he, he's like, I'm betting the farm that he's going to break in the Olympics. So I'm excited to watch that. So Maybe shot, they'll come on the podcast. Yeah, get those shot putters. We're, we're, about, to, we're about to flex hardcore. Is shot, shot put. putting I, the curling of the Summer Olympics? It, it, Except cornhole harder. Will be. Cornhole will be. Cornhole will be. I think yeah, it's cornhole. Right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I got, I can't, got carried away. <laughs> Silly me. Oh, man. Anything else? Is that it? I think that's it, man. Except, hey, I'm coming to your city, so I will see you. Me, you're speaking to me, not our yeah. listeners. Yeah, sorry, I can't not come to everybody's city, but <laughs> I'm going to LA, so Mark and I are gonna hang out. Yeah, that'll be fun. Mark's like, that'll can't be, uh, wait. Yeah. No, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah. When do you get here? When do you yeah. get here? I'm I'm busy that day. <laughs> I'm busy no, when not. you get. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We will uh, s send us your send us like a ton of Olympic emails. Yes. I need everything. I need I need sports you think should be in there. Your favorite moments. I need a thousand Olympic emails. Uh, I I I am obsessed with the Olympics. I feel like a lot of people are, and I mm -hmm. want to hear uh, everyone's thoughts. Unless it's about like your, I don't need your Simone Biles takes. Okay. Type those out and and don't send them. Um, but then send us your send us all your the, the fun send stuff. Send us your goofy right? ones. Send us yeah. your goofy ones. Yeah. We're excited. We'll read we them next week. Love the goofy ones. <laughs>